Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 69. This episode is the triumphant return of D Tales. That's right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. And D has some great stories about being in Solo. He was a Cloud Rider, he was uh, one of the Gutterites in the Sabak game, he was Quay Tolsite, which is the, uh, the Pike that was in charge of Kessel. You know, the one with the keys that, uh, that Kira beat up? Yeah, that was D in there. So we talked about uh, what it was like working on that set. How D is uh, like a legit massive fan, just like the rest of us. So it's cool when he is in these movies and he's also putting these things together of like where he fits into the story. And we have a real geek out session on this one. Uh, it was super fun. Uh, and then we get into uh, why Jar Jar is important to D specifically and how he kind of laid the path work and uh, helped him to dream bigger. Uh, we also talk about how we both kind of have the same view of the Force, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've, he has great advice for how to deal with uh, certain sections of possible toxic fandom. Uh, it's a good plan. It's a very good plan. And uh, our mutual love for Ahmed Best. We cover a whole lot of stuff, guys. When it's D, you know it's a good time. So without further ado, please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 69, with D Tales. Theme song time. We got we we planned a wedding. We got married. We went on a honeymoon, and we moved within like oh, wow. six weeks. Don't do that, D. Don't do it. Oh wow! Oh wow! <laughs> you don't sleep. Oh, my good. Well, well, you've added. Well, the thing that you added on there was the fact that you moved at the same time. Uh, oh my goodness! That was terrible. <laughs> we're like, when? How? We're like delegating. We're like, all right, if we're gonna do this here, we've got three days to move before the honeymoon that's out of the country we'll figure it out we'll figure we'll, we'll do it live so <laughs> so, so yeah just pile everything into the house and we'll sort it out when we get back that's right that's right it's just <laughs> empty it's like we'll put towels down and sleep on those for a while <laughs> but, uh, how have you been i've been good i've been good um yeah what's been happening just um as as you know, after Solo did a few um, podcasts, and and I thought they were all going to be kind of like um, spread out, <laughs> but it all came in, they were just like bam, bam, bam. That's what so you get. Like, was... <laughs> yeah. Doing cool things, D. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, so it's a bit full on. Um, but other than that, it was nice um, in a way because knowing that there's going to be a big long gap between what solo and nine it meant that i at least you could exhale sure. and and i i just went to the cinema and just kind of just you know got to appreciate everything from from um the last jedi only just coming out to then solo and everything being so close but two different productions completely right you know and obviously um the Last Jedi came out, at, at, you know, at last Christmas, mm -hmm. but we had filmed a year ago. Right? Do you know right. what? I mean? Yeah, that's gotta it's be like, weird. Hey, yeah, and then and then and then we just finished on on filming on Solo, like about was when did I finish? Maybe October or something like that. And then wow. by May, is it? The, yeah, it's true. The, it's, <laughs> you Man. know, so it, it yeah it gets you get spin out, you get spun out a little bit, but it's um. Yeah, you just get plenty of time just to get get into your, get out of your head and just kind of watch these things and think, wow, what a year, what a couple of years. Yeah, that's sure. Especially like you said, with without the normal gap, you know, from like a year, a year, a year to like, oh, this one's coming out in six months, and you filmed it back to back, <laughs> dude. That's gonna yeah. be such a weird thing. You're like, when did I do that? I don't even remember. Well, see, well, see, it was weirder when when it was when that was just the cycle. You right. know, um, 
but then when you finished um, working on one film and with it, and within less than a year, it's on the screen. Yeah, true. I didn't even think about that. Oh, the turnaround. And, and that's, yeah, and that's technically part of the same production. It's separate productions, but it's part of the same story, part of the same franchise, same thing. And you're just like, okay, I've got to keep up here. I'm, I'm not quite sure where. Right. <laughs> Where I am right now, you're just you know? making too much Star Wars. D is what's happening. You're pumping out the content <laughs> as if that were a possibility. Could there ever be too much Star Wars? And the answer is no. No, that's not. Uh, talk- not for me. I'll tell you that right now. It's an addiction that I am happy to admit that I have. Man, so how many times did you end up seeing it in this? Um, I think. Uh six six or seven times now respect six or seven. I am, yeah it's, i'm ashamed um, i only saw it three but that is because i moved <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> for some reason it wasn't in theaters very long in the town that i'm in it was only in theaters for like maybe three or four weeks and i was like this is unacceptable okay. but uh oh dude yeah. when that blu-ray comes out it's on it is on <laughs> Well, well, I I found it in 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 a few cinemas. Um, it's yeah, it's hung around a bit here. I think um, the last time I went to see it was was in was in Uxbridge, um, not too far from Pinewood. Mm-hmm. Um, but I went with my friend Serena, who works there, and um, we yeah, we went to what was it, some Odeon thing. We went to it, and the screen wasn't massive, but it wasn't small, sure. so it was just the right size, just to kind of just sit there and just be able to see everything and take it all in um yeah i think maybe this week or or next week could be the last week it's in most cinemas around here Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're we're just we're just gonna dive indie we're not gonna be around the bush here solo was fantastic all right and uh i was unprepared for how good it was going to be because this was the one that everyone like wasn't sure about going in you know it's like oh we really love han solo i don't know (laughs) And uh, I we, I actually went to the uh, premiere, uh, well, not the premiere premiere, but, like, the first showing as my bachelor party. So I had all my friends, oh, wow. and that's what we did. the night Because I got married the day it came out on May 25th because I'm did. that guy. Of yeah, course. of course. Yeah, it's oh. coming up, you know. <laughs> but, dude, it was so good. It was so good. How did you like wow. it? Let's be honest. Uh, I loved it, but it, but it, but it, it kind of, it kind of added to everything that was going through me when we were filming it. I knew it felt like a Rebels cartoon. It felt yeah. like uh, I knew this place. I knew some of these kind of streets. I knew I, this vibe, this energy, um, the pace that it was going at. It just felt like I had literally stepped into a Rebels cartoon, um, and. That, that that's kind of where I was at. I wasn't sure that's how it was going to turn out. Right. But I just I just thought, wow, this is just getting even more Star Warsy. The more times they call me in, right. <laughs> you know? You know? and so and and like I, I said before, you know, it's the hardest one that I've worked on where I just couldn't stop geeking out at every little thing because it was so many little things that were just so huge. Yeah, it's you know? true. True. Um, and so um. So yeah, so 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 with that vibe, and then going to the cinema and seeing this thing, first of all, you have to understand that the entire production and the entire cast sat there like this. Phew! <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. You know, you know, I mean, I mean, you don't normally switch productions on the same film, and True. and yet it, it and yet it transpired. Um, mm-hmm. But the heart of wanting to keep this thing flowing and getting this thing to the screen um, and um, backing its worthiness to hit the screen. Sure. You know, you know, my faith, you know, they joke about it and stuff like that, but yeah, my faith was, was strongly in Lucasfilm. In Always. Lucasfilm, we do trust. Absolutely. You know, they don't believe in failure. Um, so therefore, um, I was quite comfortable to be in their hands and, and this and be a part of this production in their hands, mm-hmm. and then to see the screen, and I'm just grinning from ear to ear. <laughs> I'm just loving everything about it. 
I'm loving that we just get the blue ink at the beginning and it's not the scroll because it's not a saga movie, it's a Han Solo movie. Yeah. And it's a com- and it's like a coming of age movie. That's what these movies are about. You've got families and individuals coming of age, and you've got this one little dude. <laughs> this one dude mm-hmm. who's gonna be coming of age and we are gonna be seeing plenty of in the future. Oh yeah. Just that, just the journey, the pace, the humour. You know, I was giggling, and I know the British audiences are, you know, they can have a delayed reaction to a lot of things sometimes. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> but, but, you know, when, 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 he's, when he's been given his name, and his name's Solo or whatever, mm-hmm. and he says, yeah, we'll get you flying in no time. And then the next shot you see is him flying through the air. Oh, yeah. I'm cracking, <laughs> I'm just, I'm cracking up at that, and I'm like, but hasn't hasn't this registered with you? That's he's flying. He happened in flying in no right, yeah. time. He's just, you <laughs> no, know, I'm, I'm I was the only one like, that got it. Okay, yeah, that, no, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. So this movie's just made for me. That's right. I will enjoy. It. <laughs> you guys can leave. <laughs> oh, but yeah, the, the it was it was such a great adventure, and it's one of those films where. Like, um, I know some people liked the, the Ghostbusters movie, the, the remake, and mm-hmm. some people didn't. Sure. Um, I was sure. one of those people that were, was, I was kind of like, I was, I was, I had no view on it. It was just like, well, you know what? They could have just made that into a cartoon. Right. And, uh, and, and with cartoons, there were no restrictions. So you could assume it would have been better. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Fair. But there's no, guarantee, there's no guarantee of that. True. But I, I, I did feel like, um, I, yeah, it felt like a rebels, car, a live action rebels cartoon. Agreed. You know, so I could have, it could have just been an animation, and I would have been down with it. Oh, yeah. You know, but then I wouldn't have been in it. Maybe. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Less down. Less down with it. <laughs> but, but you, what was the what was the ride like for you? You Ooh, know, I, it it was stressful. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> because I'm one of those <laughs> like I'm like you. I'm a diehard fan, and I love all of it, and. I don't know how I would handle a Star Wars movie I didn't like because I love I love them all. So it's like if yeah, I go in if I walked out of a Star Wars movie and I didn't like it, I don't know what I would do and I'm like who who am I? And, uh, <laughs> so I walked in really really nervous and I was like god, I just hope it's good. It should be good. It should be good. It's good. All the trailers got me hyped and I was really into it. And then everything that i saw i really really liked cuz i'm i'm about the lore as well i love the story so i was like show me things yeah. that i've heard about but i've never seen yeah. you know show me lando yes. like lose the falcon show me the kessel run show me kessel and i was like <gasps> it's everything you know i loved and it and it was great that those things were incidental and just attached right? to the story agreed absolutely you know? God, I love it. I'm also like, because I'm friends now with creature people, I'm like, I wonder who was who. So I'm like playing this game. I was like, I think that's Derek. I'm pretty sure this is Derek. And <laughs> like this game I'm playing by myself. It, it was it was funny because um, with the trailers coming out and everything like that and, and a few people seeing the L1 droids and, and things like that. I think I think I had a pick from you. You did. I, you I was this. like, looks like a D droid. That looks like D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you and trickster. you know what? You, and you weren't you weren't technically wrong because it was L one. One of those one of those droids was the original L one that they spray they spray Jello. Oh. Um, but inside inside wasn't me. Inside it was it was Stephanie Stephanie Silver who likes to brag that she could fit into my outfit <laughs> thing. So you have competition well, now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's whoever can so get into that... it first. <laughs> Oh my good! Oh yeah. If only, if only. I mean, I was I was dying to get back into one of those suits for Solo, but the clashing between being in a creature suit and then when the droids are filming and and things like that was too much. But mm-hmm. um, I did enjoy seeing my L1 suit um, as a different droid, but being worn by Stephanie, and then another L1 suit being worn by Nathan, mm-hmm. and it was just so real watching watching these these droids just mill about and. Yeah, I think they they kind of they did, they did take some kind of um, <laughs> they did take some liberties with with withdrawing my attention, and especially the droid <laughs> when when, they had, when Han Solo but when they when they go through in the speeder and we had to crash through that barrier, mm-hmm. and then I, the black comes out and he tries to stop them. Oh, I yes. I can tell I can tell Nathan's movements now. I can I can tell them in a heartbeat. Right. <laughs> and, and, and he got 
got such a cool death in that droid suit. It was he so did. brilliant. He did. I loved it. Yeah, I, I was. I was definitely one of those people. I was like, I've seen this droid before. D, hey, your droid. Is that you? And of course, you can't talk about it. That's kind of what I like to do now. Whenever I see creatures with the people that I know, I'm like, "Hey, what's up? What's up with this guy? He's kind of cool looking." Let's see if I can like just mess with him. Like Derek, when I saw Six Eyes, I was like, "How cool is this guy, Derek? Hmm? He looks kind of neat, doesn't he? Hmm? I wonder who's inside." <laughs> Did you know? Did you know he was in there? I did not. But he okay. he showed a picture. He goes, "Oh, this guy's kind of neat." I was like, "He does look neat, doesn't he?" It's funny that you would say that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That that's Derek. That's Derek. Yeah. But that's the, that. You know, it was it was weird because sometimes, like, I'm watching these things, and I do have to lean across to the person next to me and say, "Who's in that suit? Who's doing that?" Right. Because we're not all in the same scenes. And the thing with Tom and and Derek is sometimes they get brought on so early on to develop. Um, certain creatures that do need tandem um performers inside oh yeah um so and so yeah i think it was it wasn't until um the last jedi had come out um that i started asking around and i was saying who played that 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 forearm dude who was whipping the, the kids in the stables or whatever <laughs> so, oh, oh yeah that was tom and Derek. it was oh was it yeah <laughs> They, they so, I had uh, I had Tom on, and the story behind how they performed that is the funniest thing in the world because Tom was like, Tom was the actual like creature, right, the stable master, and he was the top arms, but Derek was in like a lycra suit, like hugging him from behind, and he was the bottom yeah. arm. <laughs> I was like, did you lose the coin toss? <laughs> <laughs> I listened to that podcast. I listened so to that. Funny. I did listen. <laughs> thing is, thing, you know, and the thing is, those two, those two are so hilarious. Um, and you know what? They need to be. Oh, the yeah. amount of time they sit together in certain suits, sometimes you're just like, nah, yeah, man. You just you need to you need to have a few marbles missing. To, I know. To, yeah. To do this. <laughs> no, um, you're right. You're absolutely but they, right. But they, they, they do it so well and I, I love them they're brilliant and i never know where they're going to end up or where they're going to turn up it's just so cool i know they really are so how, how did you get brought back on to solo how did this start you just get the neil scanlon call on the red phone in your office yeah 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 get that get that call from from the, from scanlon's office i'm just asking if you're available nice. um for the next one and normally and you can't just say yes and Always. then they say okay we'll get back you know, um, and so so what they do is in that time, what I'm guessing is when they say, oh, we'll get back to you then, um, is then they start allocating what creatures um, you're likely to be wearing uh, so that they, so everything is measured, measured up or whatever, so that when I do come in, it lim- limits the amount of times I have to come in for fittings because they've right. got, um, got the head and shoulder bust of me and then they've got a full body cast of me now. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I'm... I'm, I don't do as many fittings, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I get to, I get to walk, get, get to get to stroll in and walk around a little bit and have a look around at things and stuff like that. Sure. But um, but yeah, that phone call happens. Then then the fittings start. And um, I'm trying to remember the first for for solo. Okay, solo. The first fitting I had was for um, oh, I think it was one of the cloud riders. The lizard face cloud rider. Oh yeah, um, and and yeah, yeah. It's all right. So so this lizard face guy, he was supposed to be a um, a kind of like ground crew worker in the Corellian spaceport. Like oh, it, oh. like when you see it on a DVD, like you're, it'll have to be on the DVD because it's too quick on the screen. Uh-huh. You'll see when you see crowds of people, you'll see workers, and some of the workers are in red and black suits. Mm-hmm. Red and black outfits. I think there's a picture of it in in this book. Um, so I'm prepared. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so am I. So, I do um, not come prepared. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so so he was supposed to be milling about, um, mixing in with the human looking people, just as you do. Like it's quite normal in the spaceport. Mm-hmm. And I think you were supposed to get glimpses of me every now and again. Um, and those glimpses. Um, were then going to be revealed later on when you find out he's one of the cloud riders. Uh, ah. here's, here's, 
Right, so I'm looking in the Art of Solo Star Wars story, and I'm on page... Uh, 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 uh-huh. and, it, and it's that dude... Oh, can you see it? I can see it. <laughs> it's a bit blurry. I love it. But yeah, that's, that's his original design. Um... So I'm not sure. So so when you find out later on that he's part of the Cloud Riders, I'm not sure how far into production that decision came. So I'm not sure if it was something that they that kind of evolved when they were um, thinking about Emphasis um, uh, gang and how many and who should be in there and things like that. Mm-hmm. But then that's the he was going to get. It's the same with Stephanie. You see you see Stephanie wearing the green faced. Um, alien era behind Lando in the Sabat game. And she's got horns kind of down the side of oh, her yeah. cheeks. Oh, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, yeah. And I think he kisses her hand in the Denny's commercial or something. Yep. Um, now, she can't see out of that at all. She, oh. Yeah. So, <laughs> we, we had a few of those suits on this one, but she couldn't see out of that at all. Um, but spotting her around the Sabat table, you were then going to spot her as part of Emphasis Gang. Mm-hmm. later on okay so so it's so it's almost like emphasis gang has always been there watching and spying on them right and then they and then they kind of reduced all of that to um it being weasel being um Warwick davis doing the spying and then reporting to emphasis which is a lot cleaner yeah but it means fair. that yeah <laughs> and i think i think he's more worthy of the screen time i'd give him screen time every time <laughs> today but, but it was, it, and it was nice. It made more of a feature of his character too. And he sure. got to speak and everything. So, um, but that was, that. yeah, that lizard face guy, he was the first, he was the first. And then later on, he was given the second outfit for Savarine. Mm-hmm. Um, so you only ended up seeing him in, in one outfit um, rather than the red one. Um, and then after that, it was, um, yeah, um, um, me and Tom Bell, Dressing up again as got as as laughing characters in a bar. The return. Um, <laughs> yes, but, but we were but we were really ugly this time. We played these <laughs> gotterite gotterite creatures that looked like just moles in spacesuits. Yeah. Um, you know, and we were just laughing with, with drinks in our hand. I think you see us for a couple of seconds in a Denny's commercial, mm-hmm. um, and then you see us. Um, I think it's just after Han wins the wins the hand, or before he wins the hand. Um, you see, you see us laughing and laughing about, but we were, we were in that Sabak area and the droid fighting area for ages with those suits. Um, so yeah, and, but that was cool because I got to, got to try on the, 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 the shell of the mechanics within that head uh-huh. in, during the fitting. And then that's when um, Neil was 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 talking to the team and saying, "Well, can we get the bite a bit more um, uh, faster, and so it can close a bit more?" And and they were tweaking it here and there, and um, yeah. And then eventually, I get to see the head with that framework inside, which then goes on top of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, yeah, I had yeah, I think I had had someone in my I had um, an earpiece in as well. And I had um, Marcus Clark doing the operating of my face, and um, and Wim was doing um, the operating of Tom Bell's face, and um, totally got to got to know Marcus and Wim um, on on that on that for that section in, and on this on that shoot for so many days, so many weeks, and then and then reshoots on that scene and everything like that. Um, they were just lovely. And I think this was their first. I think this was their first um, Star Wars they were animatronics for. Sure. Um, but but they just jumped in. It was just like you know, it's kind of like you're, we're all the same species here. You right. know, <laughs> that's right. And 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 it kind of works like that in CFX. Everyone kind of you might not be able to do everybody else's job, but you kind you kind of know how to help. Sure, sure. <laughs> you're at least learning. Yeah, you know, and you know where the coffee coffee machine is. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> So anything to help, man. Anything to help. That's right. So, um, but so those are the first two creatures, and then and then halfway through, then they gave me um this other dude who was going to be milling about in some control room, and I just thought, oh, he's going to be background or whatever. Yeah, off okay, in the cool. corner doing his own thing. Yeah, as you do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
because because you know they don't tell us anything. We don't. I, you know, I hadn't seen what the control room looked like. I hadn't seen anything <clears throat> about Kessel. Didn't know anything about that other than seeing the Millennium Falcon parked out back. Oh, you know, I'm like, oh. Oh, so that's the mines. Is it okay? Cool. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know, didn't know those mines were going to have anything to do with me at that time, at that point. Sure. You know, and. Uh, so and then it slowly comes out and it's like, oh, yeah, you've got more to do. Yeah. Oh, no, you actually run the mines. OK, OK. And so the, the wheels are ticking in my brain. So I run the mines. Um, and then um, uh, Justin Pithlecki, who did the sculpt for the head and um, Jake Hunt Davis, who designed um, designed him, um, said to me, yeah, yeah, um, he's based on a pike. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like a pike. He says, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." They, they, they were in the club. I said, "No, I know, I know who the pikes are." <laughs> <laughs> you're like, do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> <laughs> so, and so, and so, but the thing is, when they tell you these things, I, I take it on board, and then I store it in a box in my head. I just store it because if I start playing around with all these bits of information they've given me. Right, I may freak out. <laughs> just, just a little, <laughs> fair, you know? fair. <laughs> so, so we my head, and then they said, "Oh yeah, um, uh, he's got some interaction with them when they come off the Falcon, and and um, oh yeah, you got to go and see Andrew Jack about the language and 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 how he speaks." So, uh, so I had some coaching with Andrew, and Andrew was was, was giving me the examples of of throwing up this yakking thing, and then I added these burps to it these long burps to it and just he just said oh it's just got to sound disgusting and then by the time we finished he said that's perfect you know yeah and then i was taken and i was taken on to set you know um but you know it's that's how quickly things move as quickly as i'm telling these things to you these things may have been happening in a matter of days and a matter of hours so mm-hmm. i'm having i'm having to having to basically um, brush up on my pikes. Um, went onto YouTube and found um, some c- scenes that were from the Clone Wars um, that I didn't uh, I didn't own at the time. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, so I kind of brushed up on on that. So I I I, I kind of knew how they moved a little bit, and and I knew that this this costume that I had was was restrictive because, you know, they um, it's a protective suit against right. um, the, the conditions of Kessel kind of thing. And, mm-hmm. and also the, the kind of tubes coming out of, of the, the headpiece that he has, which is spouting all that mucus and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, it's, there's always like some kind of Vader-esque right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, individual in these movies. The last one was Saul Guerrero, right. you know, and then, Oh, no, you're getting me, and so well, I'm saying it's me. So, <laughs> so, 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 so I'm kind of understanding all of these things. I'm taking it all on board really, really quick, and then I'm like, and then I'm watching um, a New Hope because it's on Sky, and and then Free PO says, um, um, or oh, they'll send us to the Spice Mines of Kessel, and I just froze. <laughs> I just froze. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm like. Dude, I oh, I run that place right now. <laughs> I, I, I run that place right now. You know, he's talking about somewhere that I'm running. I'm running <laughs> right now. So so that all just went through my head, and um, yeah, and and then interacting with with the cast members and and doing the rehearsals for the speed of the take or whatever, just uh, <laughs> just insane. It's just unbelievable, man. It's sure. Just, it's amazing. Dude, I when I saw that when I first saw it, I was like, I think that might be D because I was thinking about the work you did with Slow and Low, and it was you know up oh. the front, a creature talking, a lot of movement. I was like, who do I know that's done this like caliber of stuff before? I think that's D, and I was like, no, uh, no, maybe not, maybe not. And I, I and like you said, you when you went on YouTube to watch how they moved, I noticed that the little head dip thing. Going up, I was like, yes. is this dude a pike? That's how pikes move. The, the level of detail. <laughs> As a fan, I thank you, D. Beautiful. Oh. Beautiful performance. Love it. Was, well, thank you. well, thank you, because in that suit, it could have been anyone. It could have been um, 
um, Tim Rose in there. It could have been Paul Casey in there. It could have been Aidan Cook in there. True. Um, and um, I'm I'm loving the fact that I get to play these characters. I get, I, you know, it, I get to use my acting skills a lot more. Right. Absolutely. You know. Um, and it's nice. It's nice to have those. It's nice to have those moments to perform in, um, where it's one on one with you and another creature performer, or you're just milling about or something like that. Um, but I've been very, very fortunate with the creature suits or droid suits that I've worn. They've actually helped to evoke an emotive performance out of them. For sure. You know, Cratinus. Uh, was an absolute joy an absolute joy to play he's he's got an emotion on his face it's not a static emotion right you know um growl or something you know so he's he's just it's it's internal grin that that changes it's that changes it's it's kind of it's um it's impact with the tilt of the head or the turn of the head and right. and we got so tom and i got so much mileage out of these out of those performances yeah. <laughs> then you've got then, then I'm playing. A, then I'm a droid in Rogue One, and um, I'm in the marketplace, and and all of a sudden the kids are just naturally gravitating to me, and then we're we're improving and just chatting or whatever. And it was just amazing, just amazing <laughs> for those two seconds on set, and in that movie, it was just unbelievable that it hit the screen. And then, um, you know, slow and low, <laughs> you know, he's just. You know, he's he is one of the cantankerous neighbours that you have. You know, <laughs> I'm watching on Facebook and some ridiculous things have been going on, like the like some woman called called the police against some black girl who was selling lemonade at yeah. the end of the street. I'm I'm like what? I'm like what? <laughs> life imitates art. Art imitates life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so slow and low. He's kind of one of them. Right. <laughs> you know? without, without, Without insulting slow and low too much. Yeah, right. <laughs> but he's, you know, he's over oh, there parking on the beach. They shouldn't be parking on the beach. Uh, and he goes, oh, yeah, those are the guys right there. He's dobbing them in. It's just like, dude, wh- who, why? <laughs> you, could, you told them they went to the casino. You didn't have to personally escort them to tell on the people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Um, so, but then, but then with, 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 with what I found interesting about that is that I could give the gestures um, and and the rehearsed tone of the performance. Um, then it's repeated back to me by Ollie Taylor, you know, or Steve Kimmon, um, who are operating the face, mm-hmm. right? And so mm-hmm. I know that if if I'm emoting, if my body, if, sorry, how do I explain it? If my body's emoting um, the action of the scene and giving the right gestures, then the face is going to be doing that because they know what they're doing with the face. Right. right. You know, because you have to understand is that I can give that performance, but I'm not rehearsing this performance in front of a mirror. Right. You know, <laughs> see, how, see how it's, see how it's being performed. Mm-hmm. I'm going, mm-hmm. I'm going by the repeat of the line in my ear and, um, and uh, by the sound of the, <laughs> inside, inside the head. Sure. <laughs> so, so I know so I know it's doing something, right? Yeah. right? I just, well, I'm doing something as well, you know. Um, but those things, those those little things like like that are so um, important because as a performer or as an actor, you need there needs to be something really um, organic coming from the ground up. Absolutely, and, and then and either coming out um, just physically or coming out verbally and physically. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, and you know, and the uh, the other characters were kind of incidental in 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 the Last Jedi. Um, Lex Lex Suga, mm-hmm. Lexo Suga um, didn't appear until on the DVD, but he's a he's a masseuse. Oh yeah, so the but big there's, blob there's, thing. There's, <laughs> you know, to all the people that were involved in making it, it was beautifully disgusting. Yeah, right. um, and, and so much so that I, I I yeah I couldn't really look at it that much. Um, yeah. and that's that's the truth. Um. But yeah, so so that scene in itself is just take it is just um, a scenario, and the face of 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 that masseuse is just oh, it's just plodding along. So so even if I'm just operating the arms on the massage, right. yeah, it's kind of like all in context with 
Um, what I'm seeing on monitor, because I can see it all in the monitor from the main camera, and I can see what the head is doing, so I, I know the mood of the creature, so it's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, um, the other guy on the wall, when the fabulous breakthrough, that's just quick. And right. he's just, yeah, it's just a quick take. It's so a big emotion, the only thing, Yeah, I had to be shocked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, beautiful. Oh, but thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then... Um, uh, so yeah, that's that's the Last Jedi, and then and then Solo, um, um the lizard face cloud rider. He, he kind of I was I was coached with um, Paul Casey, and he was making him more more burly in how he walked. So he, he would swing his shoulders a bit more, and um, he's a bit more stocky mm-hmm. in 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 his his, his um, outward appearance and and strut, should I say. Um, his face didn't his face didn't move that much, but when there's like there's a couple like when when Han Solo is stood there on Savarine and then Fist is talking about um, who they are and they start revealing who they are mm-hmm. and then you see me stood to the left of of Han you can see me doing these little little twitches or whatever, um, and those were um, ticks that um, Paul Casey. Uh, had given me to work with because the face doesn't it doesn't move and it's so and it's really really hard to kind of um sure. any sort of like, thing about it like it, it was a it was a stag- yeah. stagnant kind of face so you had to compensate with movement i feel you yes yes yeah and and it wasn't one of those and it wasn't one of those um uh faces that when you turned it to one side, you would get more out of or, right. or less out of it because it had an incline on that face. Right. <laughs> it was like, this, that's what you're going to get. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, but, 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 it, but it was nice because when we made him stocky, shoulders came up a little bit, which, which kind of pushed the head up a bit more, um, mm-hmm. which meant that any, any movement I did do was going to be magnified. So even in, in that scene, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, yeah, I could have made those moves a little smaller. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And then, and then who else? Oh, and then the then, then the Gotterites, then the then the drunk Gotterites in the Sabak. It's always easy when I have to work with Tom Bell, right? You know, um, and I think the, the routine that we have is that um, we're both always going to be laughing, but his his heads and the demeanor on on his heads always imply that they're leading me astray. <laughs> you know, you know. When, Get those school reports, and they say, "Oh no, yeah, he's very, very good, very, very clever, but uh, but easily distracted." Right. You know, that was a Fair. that would be the common thing for me when acting with Tom Bell. So he's always stirring up the pot a little bit or whatever, and and yeah, and it's always laughing. So it always does change the mood on the set um, when um, we have to appear as creatures like that, sure. um, and it also helps that. Almost help always helps the um, uh, the weight you're enduring, the heat that you're enduring. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes it all go a little bit faster. Sure. And and obviously and obviously we say we try and stay in character as much as we can, even around the extras and, and, and things like that, because it's practice. But also it's it's sharing the Star Wars experience. You know, they go home that night saying, "Oh my, oh yeah, I remember that scene. Do you remember those? Remember those ugly rat face dudes? Right? Yeah, <laughs> they were real." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you see them when they put the heads on? It was even worse. Right. So it's kind of, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of nice to have features like that. Um, and then, yeah, then everything about the Pike, everything about Quay, was was an absolute joy. Um, I had to hold the costume a certain way because it weighed so much. Um, but then I also had to hold it a certain way because I was holding my keys a certain way, right. you know, um, and um, I chose to hold those keys that way. Um, and then I had to remember how I was wrapping them in my hands every single time. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it just made see? sense. Where was the visibility? Um, I... Okay, so if you imagine um, around the eyes, you've got the square holes around yes. the eyes, not including the lights, but you've got the square holes. And then um, in that in that square in that square, you've got there you've got the lights mm-hmm. right here. So all around here, that's how I got to see. 
Oh, okay. It's kind of like a protocol droid as well, like 3PO. Yeah. Ah, yeah. okay. So, so when you see the lights, I can see all, I can see, I can see everything around the light, as I can't see through the light, but right, I see yeah. everything around the light. Gotcha. It makes it, it makes it makes it tricky with with most costumes um, in general. A little bit more so when you're in a droid suit mm-hmm. because your your periphery is is, is shrunk. Um, and if you've got lights in front of your eyes and things like that, you can only see um, what's lit in front of you. Sure. If I walk into shadow or if there's someone um, in front of me, um, lower down, and I can't and I can't see them. I won't know they're there at all. Sure. So, so even so, on set it was weird because occasionally I would have um, uh, Cheeky, who was my dresser, I love Cheeky um, Serrano, Cheeky Serrano, who who dressed me and and dealt with the weight of that costume. Now she's tiny, she's <laughs> tiny. But trust me, I wouldn't want to get into a fight with her. Right. <laughs> it's usually how it goes. <laughs> Dynamite comes in small packages. <laughs> yeah, Cheeky was, and she was dynamite. So I had her and and um, a few others helping me out from Steve and Alex and people like that. But they would generally, from time to time, they would guide me around that set because it was too dark. They had too much equipment in that area, mm-hmm. you know. And, and then it would be like, Oh yeah, we're guiding him around. Well, if we're guiding him around, well, how's he going to see when they say action? He just <laughs> was he using the force? No? So um, obviously, but, but, it, but it, you know, <laughs> but, but it's kind of like, but it's kind of like when you're doing the scenes, it's all lit and everything's fine. But um, but yeah, in most suits, um, getting a very clear track of where you're looking out of um, is the priority. Absolutely, and 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 making sure that you can continually see out of that is, is another priority sure i remember watching the scene for the first time and when you bring the key up to kira's chin i was like i can't oh. imagine the stress involved in that movement being in a creature suit it's like don't poke her in the eye you you can definitely low visibility i was like how did this happen <laughs> Oh well, that was that was on that was all part of fir- the first day. Me meeting them coming off the the Falcon mm-hmm. was the first day. Me working with Ron, really, um, the crew, and and yeah, and the principals working with Ron. Wow, and uh, it was it was just so beautiful. It was just um, um, like many things in 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 this in this um, universe right now. It's one of the things that I really won't ever forget. Right, you know. Um, but when when he suggested to do that, I did say, "You do know this isn't a stunt um, a pipe, right?" right yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is a real key. Me- <laughs> it's hard metal, hard steel, right there, and I, I'm putting it under the chin of Emily uh, Amelia Clark. Sorry, <laughs> Amelia Clark put it under her chin, and I'm thinking, "I can't, I, I can't afford to hurt you." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like this will be the death of me. This is it. This is how it all ends. <laughs> and 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 she's and she's lovely. She's adorable. And um, when she jumps into character and goes straight away, mm-hmm. it draws you into it. It pulls you into having to deliver. Sure. You know, um, because there are no there are no gray areas with any of their performances. You know, it's kind of like they'll laugh and they'll joke about. Since it's the action, it's like boom. It's like, wow. Game time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I thought you guys have been doing this for a few months. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've, you've been in things before. I feel like you have. <laughs> you got Woody Harrelson behind her. I've seen you, maybe? You look familiar. <laughs> and, and in that suit. And I know. in that suit. Like Woody Harrelson. Dude. In that freaking suit. Dude, that's, that, that, this, Lando's disguise in episode six, what he was wearing, is no joke. One of, if not my favorite costume in all of Star Wars. So when I saw the helmet, I was like, is that what I think it is? I think that's what I think it is. Guys. <laughs> and then the next scene, he's wearing it. And I was like, it is what I thought it was. <laughs> you did that thing. You did that thing from Back to the Future. I did. I think he stole his wallet. That's I right. think he stole his wallet. He- I think he stole his wallet. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's it. That's it. That's it. That was me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But. Look, I'm stood there with these guys, and Chewie and Han are right there. Um, L3 is right there. 
Um, and um, I can't remember how many times I did that take with with the pipe underneath her chin. I might have been might have done it only two or three times, mm-hmm. but we got it. We got it quite early on, thankfully. Um, because yeah, I was I was kind of stressed in terms of um, me holding my shoulders up, holding this costume up, um, uh, leaning in to look at her so that I can see her, but just enough so that I can see my hand right. of where that <laughs> chin. You know like, what I mean? It's like diffusing like... a bomb. You like eat slowly, slowly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so much can go wrong so um... fast. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah, yeah, and you just really your mind is so aware of that that it's also so far away from that because you don't want to go anywhere near any kind of slip yeah. ups or anything. <laughs> You're right. Could be embarrassing. Could be embarrassing. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy though. I didn't know that was your first day. That I mean, dude, <laughs> your first day there oh, with thought... Ron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your oh, first that, day was with my, that was my first, that was my that was my first day as to, as, as Quay with Ron. Dude, and the so Falcon that, is that, there, and that was his first day. Um, yeah, right and Paul, the, the Falcon, the Falcon is right there. I've got Chewie and Han walking towards me, and and that is Han Solo because that's Chewie, that's right? right? Yeah, and that's Han Solo because that is the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, <laughs> and you're and, inside the Pike. Stay calm, D. Stay calm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? and I'm like, I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm part of the Castle Run. I'm yeah, part right. of the Castle Run. <laughs> It ain't gonna end well, but I'm part of the castle. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in charge now. <laughs> Start flipping your keys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in charge now. I'm in That's charge right. now, Basma. <laughs> Dude. Dude. And then you go up oh, wow. and then you have a great scene in a in a little bit of control room. And um, yeah. well done. Well done. Yeah, it was um but you could but you can't I'm, that's what I mean. I kind of got really good vibes about the movie um, that they were shooting. And that is given that I'm not given any information like anybody else. Sure. Yeah. Um, most information I will get is on the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of something that might go on a few days, but that's, but it's only those few days that I've been having that information. But um, yeah, I, I uh, I remember walking into the, I remember doing a rehearsal for the, con- the control room um, and this without the costume on and doing the language and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, felt, and I, I felt really safe. I mean, I'm there with the animatronic guys. I'm there with the um, the crew or whatever. So it's kind of like family all, all huddled in this room um, who are going to be operating droids and puppets and all kinds of things. And... Um, and yeah, getting my pace with them. But I kind of knew that this moment in the movie was like someone saying, right, and then we're going to break in, we're going to land on Kessel, then we're going to break in, and then we're going <laughs> to um, fill the coaxium, and then we're going to take care of Quay, and blah, 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 blah. But as part of that, like you're seeing these really quick, mo- these really quick sequences. Sure. Um, because we weren't spending that much time in the control room um, with any exposition other than the guys at the panel, right. you know, um, just and Chewie and then L33 and the droids or whatever for that adorable little droid. Room. Yeah. It was just, <laughs> I, on set, it was the, it was the cutest thing you've ever seen. These, <laughs> these little droids going mental and, and freeing themselves and whatever. And, oh, it was, it was really cool. I think a movie needs to be made of that alone. Agreed, um, just a gong droid walking across the controls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. And, you know, and, and, and then Jimmy V walking out of a wall in a gong droid thing or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, it was just all incredible. And, um, yeah, when, when, when I got to do it, it was just like, I knew I was coming out of this doorway and I'm going, this is my place. Right. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to my crib. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was one of those. <laughs> you know, and then, um, and then going, going to the screen and, and things like that. And they had footage on the screens, these computer screens that they had already pre- previously already shot. Really? So I'm seeing, seeing Wookiees fighting in, in this riot, um, not at that moment, but in a break or whatever. For when they were going to be around the panel, I saw I saw the breakout and I saw a, a Wookiee punch 
one of the one of the the guard pikes in the chest, and then he went flying. So he was on. He was a stunt guy on a wire. Yeah. But I was like, that is so. What would happen though? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get punched by a Wookiee. Yeah, I can see it. I I totally believe this. <laughs> You know, so there were things like that, and then, um, but then also there was, you know, I I was geeking out because on the, on the panel, of course, there's a little round disc where um, R two would plug in, you right. know, and I'm just, oh my goodness, that's what R, that's what R two would know what to do with that. Right, I'm, yeah. look, I'm looking, and and all this attention to detail is just there, and um, when it came, and then that's when the Star Wars fan in me came. So, right. so when it came, it's time for me to um, close the door behind behind us, closing it on Beckett. Mm-hmm. I we all know how those doors close on Star Wars, right? right yeah, we know. <laughs> we yep. know how it just happens. We know, and and maybe you've got to be still for it to kind of close, and then and then action, and then move again, so you get that pace. Uh-huh. But um, mm-hmm. when they said when Ron was saying, "Oh, you put the key in there, and then you cl- and then that, like, that closes the door," and I was just like. Really? So I put, I put the key in there, and then I looked, and then, now, then I just looked at Woody. Yeah, and yeah, then the yeah. door closed, and I'm like, so even good. I know that. <laughs> even even I know that's gonna be cool. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm like in in a, in a zone. I'm in my element in this thing, and then um, then it's time for the takedown, and so. Um, I step out. We put Darren Knopp into the costume. Oh, um, who's a stunt. you got a stunt double. The... <laughs> Moving uh-huh. up, D. Moving up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and not just any stunt guy. I got one of the Knopp brothers. So, yeah. And, and it was Darren Knopp. And I think his brother David stepped in occasionally. Um, but predominantly, principally, it was Darren. And then it was Fizz who stepped in for Amelia. And um, I got to just stand there and watch this thing take place, saying, knowing that that's me getting my butt whooped yeah, right. by the mother. Because he goes down fast. Of <laughs> yeah. By the mother. And it was, and it was so good the way she did it, though. Oh yeah. You know it, that 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 style. It fit the pace. It was, and it was what he deserved anyway. I mean, he was going to, as far as I was concerned, he was, if he didn't like the deal, he was going to enslave them anyway. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, Um, you know, so um, to get the drop on him like that and um, it just looks so cool. And then the doors open and, and a Woody's like, ah, negotiations went well. (laughs) You know, or something like that. I was just like, oh, that's cool. And then then she's, she's leaning over me and she pulls like, pulls the keys out of my chest. And it's just like, Wipes yeah, man, off. so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, today was a good day to die. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, so good, so good. And I love what you talked about with uh, performances, right? Because when your face is covered and you have to bring the performance from the inside out, that's like Japanese kabuki theater, you know, with the mask yeah. on, and it's so it is an art form, performance art, and like you're killing it, you're killing it, man. Oh, thank you. And uh, but the thing is, it's a lot. A lot of it is. I think it's <clears throat> it's come from just my my fandom of of like we like we were saying before of Jim Henson and the Muppets and things like that. And then also what Jim went on to 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 create um, with his features and yeah, understand yeah. that it's not just a hand operating somebody. It's someone physically operating a body and and giving the mood and the right gestures, um, which is one thing. And then. Um, over the years, you're seeing all kinds of variations of that play out in certain films of one kind or another or TV shows and things. And um, I then ended up doing uh, a, the cartoon version of that for Panto, you know, um, sure. at Christmas time. So where I would be playing, I played the genie of the lamp for two, two years. The other five years, I played Tommy the cat. It was this black and white cat. He had a red... Um, uh, vest on with with gold buttons, and he had these white fingerless gloves with the black marks, like it was a cartoon Disney thing. Mm-hmm. He had this um, furry suit, um, lycra in places, and this and this and this fluffy white black tail with a white tip on the end. And I had this black afro with these white ears on there, or whatever. <laughs> and then my, then my face was just painted up. Mm-hmm. But 
all of my movements in there were very um, caricatured and um, emotive to um, how kids view cartoons. Sure. Yeah, so I just I was just doing a live action cartoon. I, I didn't see it as creature work back then. So it was just a live action cartoon, and <clears throat> because he always pulls focus. There was a there was a style that I had that that I gave him, which was a certain naivety, a bit like Donkey. Uh-huh. He spoke a bit. He spoke like Donkey, <laughs> but um, but 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 there was that naivety, which meant that when they were telling the story or they were setting up a gag, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. I would act like I was hearing the gag for the first time as well. Sure, you know, and and throw it, throw my shock back at them and then look at the kids in the audience like these kids these guys are mad you know and they would get it but and then the parents have already gotten the adult performance or the adult gestures or whatever Mm -hmm. so it was kind of that and that's that's one thing but i kind of i did love doing that um and i did uh a short stint on um the uh, Wagner's ring cycle at the royal opera house where i had to where i was in daz rheingold and wore like a 15 foot suit Mm-hmm. Where one of the one of the scientists transforms into this, he's transforming into a giant. But as he's doing so, he, his his flesh and his skin is all ripping um, through his um, costume. And then I step through as him as he's making this transformation. Then I come off stage, and then these two massive hands come on from either side of the stage and grab the to grab the singers what? and pull them apart. And then and then the big head comes over the kind of comes over the back of of the stage. And then, as it all kind of reduces and, and pulls back, the, the 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 singer, the scientist, he comes walking out, and and everyone just loves it. Cause it's just so <laughs> hilarious. Sure. Right. But I didn't know that that was technically creature work either. So, um, but there's 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 certain there's certain that just kick in as 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 a natural instinct. Like we get Star Wars, right. you know, um, if they put you in in a in a, in a stormtrooper costume. And said, "Oh yeah, yeah. We just need you to march up and down and harass some of the um, the people that you see. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, ex- you know exactly what you're doing. Sure. You know, if they say if they say we need you milling about as a droid, you kind of know what you're doing. Right. Yeah. And and it feels it feels there's a lot of that um, with what I'm bringing um, to Star Wars or what I've, or what I've brought to Star Wars." And it's and it's that complete understanding, but it's also that willingness to learn from um, these these icons. You know, I was learning poetry from Paul, um, Paul Casey and Aidan Cook mm-hmm. for Lex. You know, um, uh, the Last Jedi was the first time I put a head on that I couldn't actually see out of, but then I had a familiar voice. I had um, Ollie Taylor in my ear. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, which just completely awesome, just reassuring. And then I had Claire, Claire Lawrence, the stunt woman and actress, um, by my side just to guide my my performance. Um, so there's so much trust involved, um, but trust that you allow yourself to trust. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, and I know that I'm in the best hands um, possibly in in the world working with these guys on, on these on these movies. So it's yeah. It's it's there's there is just so much. It's like I'll bring something, but then you know it's not just me. It's whoever's dressing me. It's whoever's operating my face or whatever. It's just such a oh wow. It's just such a thing. It's like it's like for example, if someone was going to say, "Yep," and we started, we've created these new awards now, That's and right. we're calling them we're calling the Star Wars Awards. Yeah, nothing original there, but the first <laughs> award goes to details, but it wouldn't go to details. It would go details. Ollie Taylor, Ben Clark Davis. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah. And 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 that's kind of, and that's what I'd love to see in the credits. I love to see the credits of when you see the creatures like that. You see everybody involved, <laughs> right? Agreed. And then move on to the next one or something. But, Absolutely agreed. You know, that's what it's, this. It's that's what my show's become like a almost a creature department appreciation show because everyone knows <laughs> I'm a massive creatures fan, and that's one of the things I love the most is like. The imagination. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Welcome back to the couch, D. And, uh, you were in that head for how long? How did it make you feel? And, uh, and, and I, I love that, like, the, the, the process. So, like, Jake Lunt Davies, you know, Luke Fisher, you get these guys that are, like, 
creating these drawings, and then you get Neil Scanlon's department, and down to like hairs creating them, and then the the mech team making the animatronics, and then you've got the performer inside, but they can't see, so you need someone else who's telling them what to do in their ear, and it's like one creature has a team of like 15 people that bring it to life. It's amazing. Yeah. And I give those people and, a microphone. <laughs> and, 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 these, and these people like, um, oh, um, Heinrich and um, Katie Hood who paint the faces and stuff like that. I mean, the lizard guy is a cloud rider. His face painting was incredible. I, I, I nicknamed it the head Pretty Boy because <laughs> it was just so lovely. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. and I'm not sure. And I'm not sure which who might who did who did um, the Rodian's head um, on Savarine. That, that was an exquisite head. Now, ooh, that was performed by Chus. Yeah, was it Chus Lucas? Chus Lucas and C H U S. She's a stunt girl. Um, and um, for most of the rehearsal, we were just stood there um, in, on Savarine for a couple of those long distance scenes and things like that, and everything's fine. But once you have to start moving around and you've got eyes like that, the head steams up in seconds and you can't see. Oh, yes. Yeah. So so you kind of need to know where you are. But when you're walking on sand and you're walking in a place <laughs> that you've just arrived a few days before, you know, um, um, and as a stunt person, you need to be a, you need to see everything around you. You need to be a, a, totally aware of your space. Oh, yeah. But when you but when it just blacks out like that, and they've said action, and you got to yeah. go kick someone, <laughs> you, your panic's gonna set in. Yeah. So um, she had a she had a she had a minor panic attack, and um, I, I I reassured her and sat down with her and said that um, um, this poodoo happens. <laughs> this, <laughs> this stuff happens. Um, and it, you haven't been given a duff head. It, it happens to all of our heads, mm-hmm. you know, and hopefully and hopefully someone will make an adjustment so that you can see a little bit better out of it. Sure. And then it went back It went back to um, Vanessa at base, and then it came back and it was adjusted so that she could see a lot better through with, with the head. And then we were paired up. But her panic had all gone by, had definitely gone. So when she knew that, when she's in a creature suit, creatures are kind of looking out for each other, yeah. as, well as, as well as the people that are dressing us. Yeah, yeah. and... And when it comes to stunts and things like that, um, normally you have a stunt coordinator, but he's watching everything. But unless you're doing a specific stunt, no one's really watching out for you. Sure. Yeah. So till it was time for her to do her stunt, yeah, it, the creature department were, go, were, were were watching out for her and make sure she was all right. But she was fine. And then and then she had that one sequence where we take where they were taken down. I say we. I wasn't there. <laughs> when they were. When they were <laughs> You know, I was a part of that fight. You know, That's right. You know, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but when they, when she was taking down one of the enforcers, and you see that clip on a really good shot of it on the screen, and she puts her foot in this enforcer's chest and puts him down. Oh yeah, I was like, that was awesome. Same that, because she's a tiny little thing, and <laughs> and and she and she and she did that wearing that Rodian head that she'd originally had a problem with. And she did it and made it so solid. She it did. was so good. She did. I freaked. But then, oh, but, but, then, but then, all, <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. And a pretty one. Yeah, I know. know yeah. All, all, all orangey and yellowy and. Yeah, oh, loved yeah. it. Loved it. it. Was that's so, so cool. cool. Dude, I love that. I love that you said the creatures look out for each other. Because that's something I've seen, I've seen and heard about. Uh, the more I talk to people that are in the creature department, and you specifically had the amazing Charlotte Louise on. She's just fantastic. Dude, I love her. She's amazing and hilarious. And we were talking about how, like, you helped her through some things as well, and, like, also delegating stuff afterwards. It's like, can I talk about this? I'm not sure where we're going. It's like, what does this mean? And you're there, and good on you, man. Good on you. I love it. (laughs) Oh bless her, bless her. You know, but I'll add to I'll add some more to that. Mm-hmm. Around the sabac table, you have that one figure wearing the disc helmet, this head. Oh yeah. You know, and you see him shuffling, shuffling. shuffling the cards. Mm-hmm. It's in nearly every commercial. Yeah. <laughs> um the, the, he was played by Stephen Bridges. Stephen Bridges is a street magician. 
Oh, really? Right. <laughs> so he's on the he's on the he's on set to give Khan or Lando some little card tricks to play around with. So when you first see see Lando and he's sitting there playing with that disc on his that that little um, coin slab on his hand, mm-hmm. uh, Stephen that taught him how to do that twirl oh, just for cool. that, that just cool. for that micro beat. But when Stephen put on the costume for the first time, he had a panic attack because he can't see out of it. Oh no! And shuffling. <laughs> He can't see out of it at all. Yeah. yeah. But then he realizes, well, everybody has got their creature suit on and, and, you know, six eyes. He can't see out of his eye head either. Mm-hmm. Derek can't see. Um, <laughs> but the, there's, there's a big team around everybody concerning this table. So as well as the people that are, are in the suits, as well as the people that are underneath the table doing the animatronics or doing the puppetry, there are people around the periphery watching to make sure that they're all okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's kind of it's kind of like intense security, man. We yeah. got we got our own. Security. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like MI five or FBI. You got CFX. That's right. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of cool like that, and um. And so he put the suit back on again, and um, he was fine the whole day. He was good, right? (laughs) Now, this is how good. When they wanted to suggest him do some tricks or whatever, he then would go rehearse or whatever and then come back to the table or do it at the table, right? Rehearse and practice it at the table. Mm -hmm. Now, when you see him do that, when he parts his hands and, and the deck shuffle from one hand into the other. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing that in thick gloves, yes, okay. and he can't, and he can't see <laughs> the real magic. <laughs> I, that's what I'm talking about, wow. absolutely. But but the journey, the journey to go from the panic attack, maybe he can't wear the suit, maybe you have to find something else, maybe maybe um, it's not a good idea dressing him up or whatever. No, put him back in the suit. He gets mm. back in the suit. He can't that then um, he's able to perform and um, give all the right gestures and everything like that, like a, like a full-on pro. And I have so much admiration for, for him and choose for, for what, they, what they endured and got through. Because I'd heard rumors about people panicking or not being able to do it. Sure. But never, never really got to see anybody go through that, let alone come through it the other side. Right. And I had... I had two amazing performers just to watch and marvel at how they dealt with their situation and got through it. Sure. You know, um, the support was there for them, but really and truthfully, if you're going to be able to deliver something like that, you've got to deliver it. Sure. Sure. He you came know? in already um, with the skills to do all those things and then just had to acclimate to the new yeah. no visibility and giant yeah. gloves. And then when he wasn't on set, he had to put up with everybody saying, show us a trick, show us a yeah. trick. Us a trick. <laughs> I'll pick a card. I'll pick a card. Hold on, hold on. It's my turn. <laughs> that's cool. But, that's, that's but, um, but yeah, so so the journey has been incredible on Solo. Like, even on Savarine. Um, so we're in Port Aventura. We're in Spain. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Um, there's a guy called Fernando um, who's working with us and helping support the, the creatures, making sure the radios are all working, making sure that all the batteries are there for the radios or for the fans in suits and things like that. So he's just on it. I'm sitting down, having a chat with him, and he says, do you know how I got this job? <laughs> I said, I said how, how did you get this job? Because are you part of production? He says, he says, and he says no. He says, I left my country. I said, I left my country because I heard you guys were filming over here. And I went up to and I found out where you, where the production was. And I said to them, hey, I want to work for Star Wars. I've come all this way to work for Star Wars. And they and they fobbed him off. And they kind of said, no, nah, no, nah, it's all right. We've got up and all this kind of stuff or whatever. And he says, he says, no, 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 I left my country. I left my country. I'm going to work for Star Wars. I know I'm going to work for Star Wars. Yeah, I'm telling you. The next day they called him. The next day they called him and they put him on set working with production. There's hope, D. <laughs> I see. I'm covered in look. I'm covered in goosebumps. Something you see. Same. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 but, but th- that is such a powerful testament to to self belief, to knowing that you have something to, to contribute, to knowing that you you um 
you want you're gonna you're going to be a part of something that you love so much regardless of 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 how it's going to happen but you're going to take the risk and take the leap that's right to, make, to see if, to see if it's going to happen you know and and obviously the movie came out and they gave him a credit gave him a credit and i'm and i'm my heart my heart for those people like even the people that were like cleaning up um the the the, the set after us or during the day feeding us sandwiches and all this kind of stuff throughout the day um i i I always smiled with them and shook their hands because they knew what star wars is sure yeah and they're having their star wars experience as well so if if a creature or someone was working for for them and they kept calling me who they kept they kept calling me um what's his name (laughs) they kept calling me oh um it's got to come to me oh um he was in uh, Miami Vice, the new one. Um, uh, Jamie Fox. Yeah, they kept calling me Jamie Fox. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think they get many black people down there, but, but they were calling, they were calling, they were calling me Jamie Fox. But um, you know, and um, so, like, so I knew they were having, I knew they were having their Star Wars experience, and um, and even even Sarah, no, no, yeah, even Sarah Lawrence, who's responsible for making sure everyone gets photoed and scanned. For these books and for everything, you have no idea what they're using them for. <laughs> you <Sure>. know, um, <clears throat> um, we sat there while they were finishing shooting up, and I think it was while Enfis was watching Han and Chewie walk back up, or it was for that shot in mm-hmm. particular. And we just, we just kind of sat there watching the the sun come in for the sunset. Because then it just let the sky. The sky just went all completely red. I'm surprised they didn't have it in the movie, but it all went completely red or whatever. And we just sat there and looked at each other, and it was just like the only thing missing is the other sun, you know. <laughs> um, but um, and then and then also also there was another lovely lady um, called Marguerite Marguerite Diaz, I think her name is, who was one of the dressers. Um, uh, th- these people they had so much um, joy. In, it just felt like they had so much joy in their hearts for what it was they were doing and what it was they were a part of. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, every day you see a set like the set we had on Savarine. It's not sure. every day you see um, those 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 hover bikes, those speeder bikes just parked. Yeah. You know, you're you're seeing um, um, battles take place and people shooting blasters and having explosions. You know, let alone mm-hmm. let alone see a and chewy walk up towards you. Yeah. You know, it's. <laughs> You know, stuff it's dreams just, are made out of, man. Yeah, it just felt so. It felt magical for me being there, and and just witnessing it all. Because I did, I did watch everything. Like it of was course. like I was watching behind <laughs> behind the scenes. I was watching everything, and but then to see how other people were um, experiencing the whole experience of Star Wars was was uh, it, uh, it's just yeah, it's pretty magical, man. It's pretty good. I agree. I agree. Even on this side of the screen, it's magical to see the work that you guys are doing. And I'm, I just, I get a special <laughs> level of love and appreciation because of people like you that are working on it. Because like in, in Los Angeles and a lot of times in the anime industry, specifically stateside, cause that's what I know. Uh, there's a lot of like, it's not necessarily cool to be a fan of what you're working on. And that's the anomaly right. that is Star Wars. It's like you guys can be like, "Oh my God, it's a Millennium Falcon! It's a Millennium Falcon!" While you're on it, and it's cool <laughs> because you're all fans making it, and it just makes me want to love it more. And it's it's so great. Yeah, it's it's, it's um, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's one of those things. But then it's you know, I think the appeal that a lot of the actors um, of today. Um, are cottoning onto you know mm. they've they've let go of of wanting that dream of having um an oscar award well maybe <laughs> you know <laughs> that, that, that only means something to them and to the industry which means oh they have they are I mean, they should be available for more for higher caliber jobs or whatever mm-hmm. possibly i don't know what perks i don't know what perks come with that sure but the only perk you know but the only perks that i'm interested in is um, the amount of people that can enjoy what we do or what the, the, the major actors are doing For attached sure. to some of attached to some of these movies? It's a, you know it's about mass entertainment, 
right, as opposed to um, a club, a small little club deciding on on whether you're worthy or not, and 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 for whatever political reasons. It's just, I you know, okay. like most of like most award ceremonies, there's a lot more politics than than anything else involved. Oh yes, but but you know, it's like they realize well i used to buy that comic i used to buy um doctor strange or i used yeah i used to read power man and iron fist oh i used to love spider-man you know oh, sure. i know it's all marvel but 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 for the sake of dc <laughs> for the sake of dc yeah i used to love superman i used to love batman you know but and they get to work on all of these things right. you know um and if it's not something i um ideally close to working on a batman movie they might be working on a superman movie knowing that he has interactions with Batman. Right. you know it's kind of things but it's 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 kind of being in that world and understanding it when i worked on um batman begins mm-hmm. as as a gotham city mm-hmm. police officer on that um i understood i understood batman um i had long since um tailed off from being a fan my fandom of batman was very very short when i was younger uh, it started off with superman um and then i got bored because nothing really could affect superman and the stories <laughs> were, were, kind of, were kind of were kind of flat back then Fair. um and so i looked around and i went through superboy and i went through the flash and and got tired of those really really quick and and then batman came along and then batman was trying to be more serious than entertaining as as a comic book um because i like i like certain visuals and you know but then i was always i always have i have um a hold on superman's cape at, at a long distance even sure. though i'm marvel um i believe that superman is the god of all comic book superheroes mm-hmm. um and it's from him um which everybody else decided well we can't do this because it's too much like superman we have to we have to change it because it's too much like superman everything if there was a pyramid superman would be sat right at the top of it oh, yeah agreed. and rightly so. so i think you know so so yeah he deserves a lot more respect than maybe yeah. hasn't shown of late to a degree <laughs> but still, you know but but I, I kill for those moments in those Superman movies where it's just a hero moment. I, 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 like most of them, it's just like, oh, forget the story. There's nothing there. Forget right, yeah. that story. <laughs> I, just, I just want to see that rescuing moment. I want to see that hero moment. Right. And I just get a charge out of those things because those things are so Superman to me. Agreed. You know, um, whereas the story, you can go two ways. Uh, 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 no, nah, forget this. No, nah, just give me the visuals. That's um, right. <laughs> show me everyone oh, oh, oh. losing, and then Superman show up and save the day. And you're like, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, I love probably why I didn't really mind Zack Snyder's Man of Steel, because it was just showing me stuff. <laughs> sure, <laughs> <You> sure. <know? laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But, but you see, so I kind of kind of dig that, and you understand it, and and I am a big fan of Christopher Reeve, and always will be. So so there's that, and then you move it into certain other territories, and you move into Star Wars. Star Wars is is more than just an understanding. Oh, know? absolutely. Star, Star, Star Wars is just beyond all of that. It's like um. Uh, every time I speak to somebody, I'm doing a podcast or a minute. I was well, I was watching something last night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I, and I was, <laughs> I was watching a, um, I was watching another a behind the scenes thing, and um, documentary, and it's one I've seen uh, hundreds and hundreds of times, and I never, it never fails to um, surprise me how George Lucas's style is still being um, honoured. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure he's treating cinema a bit like he, he could be maybe an executive producer like for TV. So he does have a big say in some of these stories. I doubt very much if the idea he, he and Lawrence Kasdan had for Solo um, was that different um, back in the day to what actually hit the screen. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but when I when I'm I, I kind of hit these moments of like how these stories are about, like I said earlier, they're about um, uh, coming of age, mm-hmm. yeah, and um, about families. Th- that style, so 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 that's woven into. So when you get the over, you get that title. Oh, it's based on myth, oh, and yeah. you got the wizard, and the tale, and you got and you got the princess, and whatever, blah blah. blah. Yeah, there's that, but then you have to go beneath that to actually understand what that is. Oh yeah, you know. 
fables, myths, and folklores were um, keys, were um, guidances um, to individuals in through story of how to live certain aspects of your life. Absolutely, you know. So, so um, it's not just about the like Excalibur. It's not just about the myths and 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 um, the yin and the yang and the and the dualities and things like that. There is so much about um, the hero's journey, the the choices that um, our particular heroes will make, have to make, sure. and and how and how those journeys become our metaphors as we grow up. Mm-hmm. You know, you get getting married and and having a honeymoon and moving into a house that is that is another hero's journey yeah, you know uh, it is you can confirm it's very difficult <laughs> yeah yeah but but you but but vroomf, you you're making you're making that leap you're making that leap and 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 your journey is going to open up and blossom mm-hmm. yeah um because of it um there are um also with luke and and vader you know it's it's how do you avoid um, the sins of the father. How do you avoid certain certain traits that you have because you've inherited them? Sure. You know how how do you turn those re- realizations around? You know, um, I love things. I, I you know I love the mechanics of of the storytelling because with within that branch, these stories are, are technically bedtime stories you tell to a child. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Um, um, and 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 they're filled with they're filled with all the magic and all the wonder, um, but also the subtext of 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 a meaning, you know, of, of of something that that is quite significant. Like, so have you gotten the conclusion of that, or or how do you understand that, you know? And it can be ongoing until you're from your twelve from your time you're twelve to the time you're thirty plus. Oh, yeah. You know, it's. <laughs> You know, that's that's what I love, I love about this, and I also love the fact that I think by the time um, your children have uh, you know um, have given you grandchildren, there will be so many Star Wars movies to look at that um, whether it's on a Disney Channel or whatever, they could show them in half an hour slots mm-hmm. um, and leave them with cliffhangers uh, or, uh, every single part of the way, and and ergo that is what inspired George Lucas. Right. He wanted the cliffhangers, like Flash, like like Flash Gordon, just wanted the cliffhangers. Um, You're right. And so, it's it's absolutely. Oh, I catch my I, I do my jaw does drop just to think that I've been in a few films that are, that are connected to to this same soap opera, to the same space opera, mm. the same story, you know. And then I've I've also realised that. I, I'm struggling to have a favorite movie because <laughs> I know because, because I know it's all part of the same story. Right. So 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 I'll pick certain aspects of the story rather than certain films. Um, and um, I have to praise and you know <laughs> I, you know I'm just thinking about I have to praise Ryan Ryan Johnson for opening it up. Oh he yeah. Just open. It's like boom. There's still more. Agree. Yeah. And. And and there's and there's so much more you don't know that you thought you know and know. <laughs> and it's just you're right yeah. you're right and I love that he also like you said it's a it's stories that you can connect with and apply to life because it's deeper than the surface and like Ryan Johnston straight up showed that with the kids at the end playing with the toys talking about oh these big stories Luke Skywalker faced it and then it kicks and uses a broom as a lightsaber you're like that's that's what yeah. it's about. Inspire hope yeah. to, to believe in yourself to do things you didn't even know you could do. It's amazing. Absolutely, you know, um, and, and 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 significantly with with Luke, with with his parents dying, yeah, you equate yeah. that to either your parents passing or the, or the time when you move out. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 t- and take that leap. It is being a bird in the nest and and getting ready to jump out of the nest. Absolutely, you know. Um, as part of that journey, but then also those those choices with the of morality that we all encounter in choosing between what the right choice is or what the wrong choice is, because either which way it could lead to you being good or you being bad. Yeah. You know, it's, George Lucas, those, man. Those, he those knew. Subtleties. Oh, he was something else. Well, God, love it. He, like, there's a video going around of him talking about uh, 
He's like, they make these grand ideas. It's George Lucas himself talking about Star Wars. He's like, you have two options. You can be selfish or you can be compassionate. It's really not that It's not that crazy. He's like, you have all the yes, time you have two awesome. options, and one's going to lead the other way. And it's like, yeah, yeah. You're, right. you're right. He just knew. Yeah. That- uh, well, well, yeah, absolutely, you, you're absolutely right, and I have seen that. And it kind of, kind of tells you about um, uh, what kind of choices you are making. Right, absolutely. You know, what kind of choices do you want to make? Yeah. You know, um, and, and do you want to take the quick and easy path? That's right. You know, or do you, or do you want to earn your way? You know, it's mm-hmm. just, look. It's oh, the best thing. See? It's the best thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm i'm doing i'm I'm loving that i'm loving those those vibes and, and they're still with me and you know sometimes i'm like with all the dvds i've got in the house man maybe i should watch something else <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing else d <laughs> you know but then but then i was just like yeah but you can't i, I kind of when i look at the dvds in my house now i'm like have i seen that one i'm like hmm and i'm like Oh yeah, that starts like this, and then that happens, and that happens, and that happens, and then I've, I've gone through the whole movie in my head. Right. I don't need to watch it. That's right. Right. right? <laughs> but the but the Star Wars movies you've seen a million. You're like, I mean, we'll pop it in. We'll just see what happens. <laughs> you know, just, they just keep giving me stuff, and the, and the thing is, I keep giggling because I keep finding funny little things in in some of the movies. Um, but I'm not gonna share. I'm not gonna share with oh, yeah. you because once once I tell you, I can't untell you, and you right. can't unsee them. <laughs> <laughs> right? But but even in even in some of these new ones, there are little there are little funny little bits that I get or whatever, and and it's just like oh man, but this is Star Wars. And like even I was watching the special editions of um of the trilogy, mm-hmm. and George Lucas purposely. <laughs> You know, you know the famous stormtrooper that hits his head when oh, he yes. walks into the door. Boink. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, he's purposely put the sound effect on that quite loud. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to say yes. Boink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but the thing is, because you know it happens now, you watch the stormtrooper's reaction to it, and it's hilarious. Oh, yeah. It's like, and you know what's going on in the tent? Okay, nobody saw that. I know exactly. <laughs> and George, I see it. Put a little thing there. <laughs> Gotta love it. It's the best thing in the world, man. It's the best thing in the world. And you're a part of it now. And you're helping create it. And you're a major part of these stories that would not be there were it not for you. And I think it's great. Oh, uh, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. It's surreal. It's, um, deserved. Wow. It... Mm-hmm. I said it. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. Cause thank you know, you, that's thank the you. other thing about specifically Pinewood. Everyone is the best of the best at what they do. Like there's nobody dragging their feet. There's nobody like, oh, you know, it's whatever. Like, you're all top of the caliber. Like, God, that's why. That's another reason it's so good. It's from the top down. It's so good. Everyone's doing the best that they can, and it comes across on screen. And I, for one, want to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, for one, will say I appreciate your thanks. <laughs> yes, yes. Receive. We, <laughs> we, we appreciate your, your thanks. Um, But, no, I, I'm I'm very appreciative that people like yourself would want to talk to me about stuff like this. Um, and that there are people out there that enjoy listening to things like this. Oh, yeah. You know, um, I didn't have this um, when I was a kid growing up, um, enjoying the behind the scenes of all kinds of movies, especially the Star Wars lot. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it was, it, yeah, it was a very minute um, small thing. It, would, it was something that would have to be filmed specifically to be aired on TV because it wouldn't appear on a, on a VHS. Sure. You know, um, these things didn't really start appearing until DVD, you know, um, where you knew that's where you could find it. Uh, so yeah, knowing that there are people out there just as interested, um, in the stuff as I am or I was or whatever, it's, it's just fantastic, but I'm still, I'm still kind of addicted to, to the behind the scenes. Like I said, on Savarine, I, I just, I, it was baking or whatever, but I would sit out in the sun and I'd watch the first unit shoot, then I'd watch the second unit shoot, um, uh, even to a point where creatures were looking for me. <laughs> you know, we're going to get you, we're gonna get you in the costume, but we couldn't find you. I'm like, dude, I'm with, I'm with the first, I'm with the main unit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
obviously. You know, <laughs> you know it's like, where else would I be? Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But, but, you know, it, it dawned on me while I was out there why I, 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 st- I, I continue to sit there watching these things. And it's because it's never really left me, that, that enjoyment of the behind the scenes, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, even being a part of these things. And I think what's beautiful about it for me is that I can watch the behind the scenes and still not know anything about the story. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I could do it if I knew everything about the story because, you know, um, we as creatures are are, 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 are are surprised just like everybody else with what we see. Right. You know, the scenes that we work in, work on, or whatever, they're so short it doesn't take up any time of our of 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 our um, awareness when we're watching these movies. Sure. But, um, yeah, the fact that we don't know a damn thing is yeah. it kind of it kind of helps. It sure. really does. That's amazing. Especially, and also, you never know what's going to make the edit, what's going to make the cut, and things like that as well. And it's just like, okay, let's, this is going to be an interesting ride. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, speaking of behind the scenes, because I'm also obsessed with that, uh, I've made yeah. a whole, I made a whole show about behind the scenes and learning about the inner workings. Um, were you there for the Denny's commercial? No. Cause no I'm, I wasn't there. Because it's such a strange thing, because I remember watching the Denny's commercial, and I was like, this is incredible. I think that's the real creatures. This is do they just show up on set and is like, let's get some Denny's in here. And like that's a good idea. Creatures, stay where you are. Yeah, Denny's. yeah oh, <laughs> we weren't there. We weren't there for the Denny's commercial, but there's a shot that they took for, took of us, which is in Denny's commercial. Right, right. right. Um, um, but that's kind of um, uh, like I said, Tom and I were were shooting were in the Sabak. Um, saloon area mm-hmm. um, a lot, a lot. They <laughs> they overshot that. They overshot that um, incredibly so, just to make sure they had enough coverage. And and Tom and I had to be there on those days in costume, either watching the droid fight or watching the Sabat game, or stood at the bar or sat down at a table. Um, mm-hmm. But it was um, but that's what I mean, you know. And you're aware of all these things they're shooting, but you never know where it's all going to end up. Right, right. You know, but but you give them everything because you just don't know where it's going to end up. Like like I said, like Rogue One, that clip was on was on a break. Right, you know? it wasn't and even in the in the movie. Like, and it was in the movie. Yeah. God. So so it's it, things like things like knowing how they shoot and being aware of how many cameras there are in a room. Um, it does it does kind of dictate to you, but. The the real thing about the Sabat game is just the showcasing of the creatures. Oh yeah, you know. Um, I don't think I think uh, were there. Uh, yeah, I think every creature in that room, apart from Chewy, <laughs> mm. um, was a, was an original creature. Yeah, that's so cool. You know, um, you had no you had no kind of familiar face creatures or species um this far out into the galaxy or, or this or in this quadrant of the galaxy um so you don't, there aren't any familiar faces there i think there's someone wearing a mandalorian headpiece in there somewhere mm-hmm. but i don't i i see that it's either a mandalorian or someone who's who's killed a mandalorian wearing a head, head right. <laughs> helmet because it wasn't anything that significant um but I know that was being worn by um by a by a little, by a young actress in there. So um yeah, it's that that whole game and then also what they also filmed um was the three sixty. Right. Yeah. I I did that. The VR thing is so cool. Like you're at the table. Yeah. Yes. And then yeah, and then when you do that you'll see us in you'll see us stood to the right of, of Han. Yeah, yeah. Um, just having a drink and laughing away or whatever. Um, but then they were shooting that. So I thought, oh, yeah, well, I saw Gareth Edwards release one of those for Rogue One and it was on Facebook or YouTube or something like that. So maybe that's what they're doing that for. Um, but they had a special purpose for that. Mm-hmm. So that was launched with the the car, the Renault car ad. Right. Um, and, I, 
And I instead of saying the name like that, they should have paid first. <laughs> <laughs> Send checks to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but um, when you if you saw that car on display, you could ask them for the um, oh what was it? You ask them for the for the for the, for the something experience, mm-hmm. and then and then they're like, oh, okay, and then they sit you in there, and then they give you the VR head, headset, and then right. you could watch watch that sequence play out. Sure. Um, so, so I thought, oh well, that's clever. So it's, yeah, it's not just not just for a three sixty, just look around. It's just it's been given specifically to a um, sponsorship attached sure. to a sponsorship. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that that whole you know, and that area, you know, we kept waiting. We kept waiting for um, the the Falcon to be to be to, 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 to be to be bet on. You know what I mean? Sure. And sure. It, it didn't happen. It was like, yeah, there's got to be another game somewhere in this movie. Yeah, there's got, <laughs> you know, and, and lo and behold, it's right at the end of the movie, and Charlotte's in that. She scene. is. That's um, so cool. But it was, um, but the but the way that the way and the pace that movie just went at it was like, uh, you know, you know, like, do you remember when you saw Young Guns? Have you seen Young Guns? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know when you saw that for the first time kind of thing and that's it's Billy the Kid and he's got his little troop and he's got his gang or whatever. Oh, yeah. But it's hilarious. Yeah. Those movies are so hilariously brilliant. Um and and obviously you can't date them because they were already set way, way back when. Sure. Right? But, but they're enduring and they they last. And you kind of think, well, you know what? Maybe if 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 Zorro had him would be, you know, it would kind of go at the pace that Han Solo went at. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You, you got, you got the card game in the saloon. You got the cheating. Um, you know, the only thing that was missing was, was someone getting shot. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but, we, but, but we have that to come. That's we right. That still That's right. We'll get there. Right? <laughs> yeah. You know, so so it there was it had a lot of um, uh, western western paste. Oh yeah, um, for sure. Even had a gunslinger. It's... I mean, thank you, yeah. dude. Oh. You know, you know when you know when Han is stood there, um, just at the game, just before he walks into the game, and you sit there and you get the silhouette of him, and then he stood out in Sabarine, and you see him, he's about to draw. Oh yeah. On and, and yeah, um, I spot that scene again in the New Hope when he meets um, in the special editions when he meets Jabba, and he stood there and he got, he's got his hand on the holster again, and he's going, "You didn't think I was going to run, now, did you, Jabba?" You're right. I'm, I'm like, I'm mm. like that. That's what they Dude. <laughs> it all makes sense. It's like poetry. It rhymes. <laughs> Dude. You know? But then also, talking about Solo, man, I, I, I haven't had a chance to talk to anyone about Solo, so it's all coming out, man. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's why I'm here, you know? <laughs> that's so great. But so- then you- we get it explained as, as, as to why the Falcon always turns sideways when it's escaping thing, and, and it's Han's move. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. Han's move. Oh yeah, dude. There's so much in Solo that's just. I feel like so out of all the ones, it's like has the most Easter eggs and like things that are for like the deep fans, you know. God, it was so good. Yeah. I so I have to ask you the hardest question ever. Out of the the characters that you played, is Quay your favorite? <laughs> is Quay my favorite? He's up there. Yeah. He's up. It's hard. It's hard because it's like, um, like I said, I don't, I, can't, I don't have favorite films. Right. But when I've ever been honest, I've always said um, Star Wars because Fair. it was first, and mm-hmm. without the first one, you wouldn't have had any of the others. Absolutely. You know, and and plus because of what George went through um, in getting that movie made. Oh yeah. Um, and introducing um, everything visually. Um, entertaining in cinema today um, that has been totally taken for granted. You know, I think people forget. Oh, yeah. You know, you know, um, you wouldn't have Pixar without George Lucas. I you know, know. There, there's, there's just so much stuff. So, so because of everything he endured, you know, you know, when the world is against you and it's just you and your dream, and 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 you know your dream is real. Oh yes, you know. And, and can manifest into something of, of something quite significant, but people around you just can't see it. And you're just thinking, Look, just give me a break. I can show it to you. Then you'll get it. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, um, and and he kind of 
forced that through with with help and the support from from Coppola and and, and Spielberg and, and his filmmaking friends, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But but for him to get through it and to make that movie, you know, um, I have so much respect, so much heart, and it's I think it's gone a long way to inspire me in just believing in me. You know, when you're talking about hope, oh, you yeah. know, and how these inspire all these things. I think I think just the hope that I've I've always had in me to be able to achieve um, things that I have and and I, I have to, I have yet to still achieve, you know I think comes largely from things like that. Agreed. And I remember seeing, I remember we, uh, like randomly, it's not just about Star Wars. I randomly remember seeing um, uh, a documentary on on Michael Flatley, the tap dancer, mm-hmm. and it was about how he managed to get. Um, um, the Lord of the Dance, how it went from just an idea to to being written down on the page and who's drawing things or whatever, to him pulling off this massive tour and this massive concert, you know, and whenever you see or hear about anybody who's gone through so much just through something so giving and and, and, and wonderful that's when you know all things are possible Agreed. you know and it, and it literally just comes down to how much you believe Absolutely. you know people people can make things happen and, and and whatever and make their lives turn around by believing in in in, in things external from themselves mm-hmm. and um, i at a very young age realized that if they can make things happen for them they're believing in and, and things around them and, and, and other kinds of belief sources and things like that. Why don't I just believe in me? Sure. Absolutely. You know, um, it's more direct. <laughs> you know, it's more, uh, for me, it's, it's more rewarding. Um, and it's more, and it seems more natural. It seems like it's more of a natural process to, to do that for me. Um, so, you know, um, out of all those quick coming back to the reason why I had to go there and, and answering that question is because say asking about Quay, I would never have gotten to Quay if I hadn't had impressed as Crackness. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. If mm-hmm. Crackness hadn't worked, um, I don't think Neil would have employed me again, Sure. you know, or, or given me, um, or put me forward to be the principal droid in the next movie. Right. Do you know what I mean? Um, Everything, everything starts with Kratinus. And what's beautiful about Kratinus is, like I said, it's this beautiful grin that um, Luke Fisher um, put on his face where it's an internal grin. So it's not like he's, his eyes are bulging, like he's laughing at somebody or at something specific. Sure. It's something, something like it's just like eh, he's laughing inside. It, it's just all internal. So you tell him something and he's just laughing. And people are people that watch that on set or see that in a movie can see that he's finding something funny and it's funny to see him finding something funny. Right, right. Rather, rather than there being any kind of negative energy, um, like he's laughing at someone mm-hmm. or laughing at the expense of someone because the only person who's making him laugh is is um, Prashi, who keeps losing at this game. Right. Um <laughs> You know, um, so so in a, in a, so there's something. There's a beautiful heart. There's something very, um, very something I can really connect with. You know, with Kratinus. So I love so it. So Kratinus, Kratinus will always be will always be my favorite. Um, but I will always appreciate um, those characters I'm given um, to that are so much more than Kratinus because. Um, it's because of crack, and that's why I get to do those. Sure, dude, that was the best answer ever. You are so <laughs> you're so much better articulated than I am. <laughs> I'm like, I should have written that down. That's I know that's going to come up. Again. <laughs> I know, yeah. Just just send them links to this show. Be like, who's my favorite? Listen, I talked about this at length on this show. <laughs> dude, that was beautiful. Yeah, I mean, you can't. We can't top that at all. <laughs> Uh, let me ask you, let me ask you, you know, going into solo, mm-hmm. going into solo, I'm um, fresh, not knowing anything about it, mm-hmm. but kind of knowing that 
oh, they might answer where how Han gets the familiar falcon. Oh yeah. Um, they might or say how maybe he meets Chewie or how he meets Lando. Um, what were the more significant um, reveals? Mm-hmm. Not just but reveals that kind of stood out for you in that movie. Ooh, that is that is a good question. Uh, def- so my thing that I always want to see in new Star Wars is I want to see things I've already heard about but I've never seen. Um, so right. seeing Corellia was a really big deal because we know Han is from Corellia, but it's like we're never going to see it. Like it'd be cool if we did, but all right. <laughs> so seeing Corellia was huge. Seeing Kessel was huge. Back to episode four and 77, they talked about the spice mines of Kessel. You're like, I wonder what that's really like, you know? Like, I, I love innovation, and I love new things, but I also want context from what I've already heard. You know what I mean? So it's like, let me see. Yeah. Like, I love new creatures. I think they're amazing. When I saw a Rodian, I was like, oh, I know what it's one of my dudes, you know? So it's like, I love adding depth to things. Like, oh, we've <laughs> we've heard about this. So Corellia was big. Um, yeah. Corellia was huge. Kessel was huge. Uh, meeting Chewie, which was so different than how it was like in the old EU and stuff. I was like, because I did not see right. that coming at all. Like when I watch these movies, the first time I'm like, I can't fully enjoy it because I'm dissecting every frame. I'm like, what's back there? What's that? Oh, is this, you know? The, you, you, <laughs> usually the second time I watch a new Star Wars movie, I can be like, oh, now let's watch it, you know? Because <laughs> there's so much yeah. depth. Um, so I did not see that coming when they're like, throw him in the pit with the beast. I was like, Ooh, I wonder what creature they have for this one. And it's <laughs> Chewie. <laughs> yeah. So Brilliant. yeah, it was, there's, there were so many things in that movie that I absolutely loved. And then obviously nobody saw coming Darth Maul. And that yeah. when, when I saw, so obviously I'm, I'm a big fan of all of it. When I saw the foot, I was like, oh, it's a droid yes! foot. And then I yes! heard Sam Witwer's voice. I was like, that's Darth Maul. What is... You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this is real. <laughs> Never in a million years would I ever have thought Darth Maul would be coming back on screen. And to have him played by Ray Park and voiced by Sam Witwer. I was like, yeah. it's all come together. It makes sense. So, yes. <laughs> but, then, then, but then also where they're placing it. So it's obviously oh, yeah. before he... It's obviously before he's run into Obi Wan. Exactly. Yeah. And because Obi Wan is is like Luke's bodyguard that he doesn't even know that he has. I know. You know what I'm saying? But but that was that was incredible. But also, what led into that? You know, Amelia Clark's performance oh, in that God. mood. Amazing. You know, um, there was nothing easy about that performance that she gave and yet it, she made it look so seamless the the um the conflict of emotions be, uh, kind of belonging to um dryden you know um oh yeah well while, while conversations are taking place while han is there and and things like that like she hasn't told han everything you know so those two years man Wow, that that's that's the movie in of, of itself. But I'm not saying I'm not saying I want a movie now. Right? Yeah. I'm not saying I want movie, right. Fair. <laughs> that's, you know, I'm just putting out. I'm just saying. Right. These two years. Now. Um, but I um, yeah, that always hide having that hiding of of information. Yeah, she's gonna help them get what they need to get. Okay, cool. So, um, that's pretty standard. But then when you want to fly into the relationship aspect of it, you know, um, it's, it starts to get murky. It starts to get a little bit messy because, you know, um, she didn't she didn't kiss him. He kissed her, uh-huh. um, which, which which also means that he doesn't know, exactly. you know, and, you know, and 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 it's like, OK, if she had kissed him, you say, OK, well, she has a plan. She has, oh, there's something that she's going to fight for. Mm-hmm. But she isn't vibing for it, you know, Crazy. which is kind of, woo, woo, right. So 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 there's that. But then it's that. Oh, man. When 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 she drops stride and and um, it's it's heartbreaking it's heartbreaking because you know oh something's up right when she says 
she says to Han, your smile, whatever. And she and you see her demeanor. She's trying to hold it together. Mm-hmm. She's just killed her boss, which means she's going to have to take the boss's place um, and answer to you know who, mm-hmm. right? Um, and does you know who know her or know of her? You, what what kind of what kind of um, what, uh, bullying relationship is that? But um, just that moment when you realize that door closes that he's not going to see her again yeah until and until they make a sequel if that ever happens agreed you agreed. know it's um, so good so many layers and i love the second beckett sees han he goes she killed dryden yeah i figured you're like oh this guy knows this guy knows yeah god yeah and then also and also is um, people are quick to jump to the tagline of certain things, like saying, oh, yeah, oh, so Han shoots first. No, they understand. You know, the reason why um, you didn't really need this audition version of Greedo shooting was because you knew it was coming. He was telling Han he was about to kill him. Right. right? Yeah. So, so <laughs> really, you're going to kill me? Boof. There you go. Take that. Sure. <laughs> right? Sure. That's what happened. There's really no choice That's here. <laughs> yeah. And in this one, um, he's learning everything he can from Beckett. And um, if he hadn't learned that he's going, he needed to shoot first, he, it, it would have been a very different movie. Yeah. Or an ending. <laughs> For sure. And a different future. <laughs> a different future. We'd have to go to the Star Wars universe. That's right. Like Marvel. Exactly. Star Wars <laughs> 2. <laughs> you know, but then we see Beckett. We see Beckett about to draw on Han. Mm-hmm. He's about to draw on him. So he has to, you know, so... There isn't. I don't. I've never. And I've never really thought of of there being such a big deal about him shooting first. Mm-hmm. Um, it was nice to see it, it being given a context. Sure. Um, for it actually happening. But I love Beckett twirling the guns. I love Beckett bringing oh, yeah. the rifle and then getting and giving Han the gun. Oh yeah. You know. So the gun he's got is as powerful as a rifle. It's just like, yes, man, just give him, just, just preach on, just preach on, on, on all the techie stuff, man. Just... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, that's another thing. Like I said, the detail in this movie that's like, oh, oh, oh. Like, first time I saw it and he's pulling it apart, I was like, what is, is that the, is that the DL44? That looks like the handle of the DL44. And then he pulls the barrel <laughs> off. I was like, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Oh, but it's, you know, um, uh... And also, I love, this is what I love. I love the fact that it um, didn't do as well as they expected it to do in the cinema. Mm-hmm. I love I love the fact that there are, there is a portion of the Star Wars fandom that um, were in two minds whether to see it or not. Um, mm-hmm. Not talking about those that, that kind of, they don't, want to, they don't want anything to do with Star Wars unless it's their, their I'm talking about just the people that were kind of on the fence a little bit. Right. You know, and and it's so much like Empire Strikes Back. You right. know, um, the people were in two minds about Empire. You know, and word got round, but it still did well eventually. Mm-hmm. You know, um, uh, people were the same, felt the same way about um, certain prequels, um, if not individually, all of them or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've, made, I've done a complete 360. You know. These, these movies, it just goes to show you these movies aren't being made for us. You know, we, we can enjoy these movies and help pass on our experience to the younger audience or to a new audience. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're being made for our, our children's grandchildren who, who get to watch it in, in the right context of just enjoying these movies, like okay. live action cartoons. You know, um, that's... Um, that's something that that comes across very, very um, strongly in everything, and it's important. It's kind of like if there was a if there was a whole line of of, of Star Wars toys, like say if there was a whole line of Kira toys, mm-hmm. and one of those Kira toys had a defect, you know, um, just the one has a defect. Which one are you going to go buy? Yeah, well, if I'm going to resell it, it's the defect. <laughs> there, see, there, yep. there you go, right? So, so. These movies that people are kind of like saying, nah, there's something wrong with now, now I'm not digging it, do a 360 somewhere down the line. Sure. And, you know, and, and I think once this movie goes to DVD, whether they then buy it, or once this movie then hits the TV screens and then they can watch it casually, um, so far down the line from 
from their previous context or or move or how they viewed these movies um, will be pleasantly surprised. Um, and it's funny, you know, they were making like some of the fans were complaining that the Last Jedi wasn't wasn't like didn't didn't service the fans. And then when they were given the movie that did service the fans, they were like, "Oh, let's boycott it because the Last Jedi didn't service the fans." <laughs> so, and and the, then complain. The, yeah, it's the beautiful. level of intelligence level of intelligence is beautiful and and um I will I will say that you know what they must be more intelligent than me and must be a completely different species and I'm happy with that. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm with you. I always cuz I I'm a I'm a diehard prequel fan as well. I love them all and uh I always I always joked when people were like, you know, I like Star Wars, but I just like the original. I was like, well, that's cool, but you only have three movies to watch. I've got six, so I don't really know who's coming out on top here. You know, so I'm with you. Well, talk, talking about the prequels, I, I every time I see every time I see this performance, it, it does it does grab me, and it's a creature performance, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's I think it's in Revenge of the Sith, and it's yes. It's when Obi Wan lands on this planet. Um, you know when the the troopers are first given the sixty six. Oh yeah. And then and then Obi Wan rides rides on the back of the lizard. Oh yes. Yeah. I have these. I don't know where that's. <laughs> can't remember where. Utapau. Can't remember what planet that is. Utapau. Where is, where is it? It, See, you're good, dude. I'm, <laughs> I'm Jedi Brian. <laughs> I have a reputation to uphold. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that's brilliant. But it's when he lands, when he goes there, <clears throat> excuse me, and he speaks to this this guy who comes up to him, and he's, yes, yes, they're surrounding us. What oh, are you yes. going to help us? Mm. Yeah, I love that. I love it's his so performance. Good. <laughs> I love it. Oh, you yeah. Know? And his friend says, and it is, 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 is um, companion says to him, um, he said he's coming to help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he didn't say. He just walks off with the cane. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> I've got these movies memorized. <laughs> you know, so 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 creatures, creature character performances like that. You know, um, that might have been the only performance he had in the whole all the, all of those movies, but it was so good. It was so significant to that scene. I loved it. Huge, um, huge creatures are what the, yeah. they're, they're that extra level of Star Wars to me. So, like I've always said, one of the the two things that I love the most about Star Wars are the Jedi. And the creatures yeah. and aliens. Because those are things that are not in other things. There are blasters, there are spaceships, there are other planets. There are no Jedi, and there are these specific creatures that make Star Wars real. Yeah. You know, it's so much more than a movie. Yeah. And you guys are the ones that are adding that layer of life to well, it. Well, what was that movie that... Um... Oh, my goodness. I... I... When I try to remember these people's names, it always goes. Um, uh, there's a there's a girl who does the voice of Meg in um, uh, Family Guy, but uh, she's an actress. Yes, yes, yes. Mila. Oh, what is it? Mila uh, Mila Kunis. Whew, that Mila hurts. Kunis. That I, yeah. So right, hit, right, right. Don't 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 stress now. There's another one. She did another movie with with a guy who's um, uh, Magic Mike. Oh, you know what? Stand by. <laughs> Are you by chance talking about Jupiter ascending? Yes, yes. I love that. So, movie. so, 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 in that, so in that movie, you can tell that these creatures in this movie aren't the same creatures as in a Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that difference, the difference being is what you're referring to in, in a sense, the same about the creatures and things like that. Yeah. Um, I've, I've to understand that even with the new creatures, mm-hmm. um, they are very much star Wars creatures. Agreed. And maybe that's because I'm seeing, maybe that's because I'm seeing them on a star Wars set. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fair. Fair. But, but, but they come across as star Wars. I don't, I don't think, um, actually there was one, creature in jupiter ascending oh my goodness who had the face of like an elephant i was about to say the little elephant pilot it's one of the best parts of the whole movie yeah and then there's elephant face people walking about on tatooine 
in um in the special edition, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. I'm so I'm not quite sure what happened there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Possible crossover? <laughs> if, did we just did we cover something? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's yeah, there's there's something odd about that one. Right. But, um, <laughs> I'm into it. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to talk about Jar Jar. I'm going to talk about Jar Jar. Yes, hero of um, mine. Not even joking. Let's dive. Uh, it's you know. Yeah. When I when I first when I first heard about the prequels, mm-hmm. I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to be involved. Then I found out that they were taking place um, filming in Australia. Mm-hmm. Then it was like, well, there's no way I'm going to get a casting here and be taken to Australia because they're looking for names. Um, uh, and God knows how many people they'll want to see, sure. you know, and I'll, I'll just be one of those numbers and it will be. So it's, it's, I think it's more, I think it's 10 times more deflating if you're a Star Wars fan and, and you have to go through that procedure. For sure. And I think maybe that's, probably why i had a problem with um open casting calls things like that maybe sure um but um you know um where was i where was i um jar jar yeah so so yeah so 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 you kind of i was yeah i, I wanted to follow this thing and it, there wasn't it didn't look like there was going to be a, a chance or an opportunity and there wasn't mm-hmm. yeah I'm not one of these people that also say, "Oh, I'll even be a stormtrooper," right? right? <laughs> um, because because you know stormtroopers they are associated with the negative, and right. you know you're you're calling yourself Jedi Brian. You know there's a reason why you ain't calling yourself Imperial Brian. That's right. You know that's right. So, so I don't really gravitate to anything to do with stormtroopers or anything like that. I love the guys and, and that, you know? but in terms of in terms of my fandom and in terms of what I connect to, I associate them with a negative because Same. it's the light dark and how you know totally what we talked about before. So I kinda of saw there was no there was no no chance of me doing any of that. So I, I stepped back, you know, and I heard about things being filmed and I, I even met Neil McGregor and, and got him to sign something for Dude. <laughs> yeah, you know. So um and and I said to him, you do know George has immortalized you now. And he says, yeah, I'm I'm kind of getting that feeling. And then as soon as I walked away, because it was like a red nose after party in Kensington somewhere. As soon mm-hmm. as I walked away, everyone pounced on him, and I was just like, oh man, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> 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 um, and see, and I don't normally get autographs unless it's certain individuals for certain things. I don't, I don't really do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did in this case because um, it was Phantom Menace. Star Wars was coming back. Oh yeah, so, you know. And then it comes out, it comes out or whatever. And I understood that um, the dialogue from three PO and R two was was also being aimed at um, some of the kids. Um, I also realized that Jar Jar was that physical embodiment of entertainment for 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 children in terms of breaking down certain tension or whatever in a story so so it's kind of like he just he just washed over or whatever and i was just trying to pay attention to everything that was going on um so i had no real kind of jar jar to be honest other than um i just hadn't really invested sure and then um the dvds come out and i'm watching the behind the scenes now i will say this every single time the prequel DVDs oh, yeah. and the behind the scenes on these prequel DVDs are the best behind the scenes f- clips and footage of any DVD out there. 100% yeah? agree. 100%. There is, a, there is a ton of content, you know, and yeah, you might not be interested in this aspect, or whatever, but there's so much. And it's not just on the Phantom, it's on all three of those discs, mm-hmm. you know, so I don't was george's idea or rick mccallum's idea but either which way i'm praising those fellas for doing that because oh my goodness the months of 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 um of attempts i had while watching these things when i was going to bed trying to see it all the way you know and i'm falling asleep i was like okay this is gonna take a few months or whatever and there's so much of it um but on this i saw um them in rehearsals i saw bits and pieces then i saw judge i saw ahmed wearing the jar jar outfit or whatever mm-hmm. and i was just you know at that one moment that one moment i just said to myself 
oh wow i so wish i could have done that right. and the only and the only that made me say i wish i could have done that is the fact that i'm watching a black performer and there's nothing specific that says why he needed black or needed to whatever but i'm seeing a fortunate black performer up there and i'm thinking oh wow so it's possible right absolutely yeah? you know and and um I I watched him walking to the set and he's walking like Jar Jar. I'm going to laugh with the dresses and stuff like that and, and things like that. And obviously, I'm watching it on the flip side. So I know people have lost their damn minds. Right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Just, just about Jar Jar alone. I'm watching it and I'm I'm like, if that was you, would you have done, would I have done anything different? Um and I'm, and I'm not saying performance wise, I'm just talking about him being happy and, and, and talking away or whatever, because why wouldn't you be working on a Star Wars movie? Right. As right? a main character. And, and, yeah. And it's being directed by George Lucas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, so I'm looking at that. I'm like, wow, I wonder how he's, how he's dealing with it now, you know, because to be perfectly honest, you know, um, he's there. He's part of the story. He's, and 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 obviously he took a hit in the sequels, and I, I don't think he was he originally meant to take a hit like that. But you saw less of him, right? As to get through movies, you mm. know, and uh, even while even though they made him more um, g- gain maturity in those movies, you know, they they did they, it didn't need to be that those those parts that, or, or clips didn't need that small they could have they could have been bigger for what they get set up in the first phantom menace mm-hmm. but i looked at it I was, I was like well you know regardless of what happens on the flip side yeah that's you know to, to be to be that creature or or anything like that in star wars would, would have just been awesome so you know i'd always known it was him doing it and i i think he did he do a couple of voices in clone wars did he do a couple of he of did jar jar? A, he didn't do all of the jar jar episodes but he did do a few and you can tell right. and you can tell the episodes where it's ahmed best and when it's not ahmed best doing jar jar you're like one of them sounds right. like a jar jar impression the other one is definitely jar jar banks <laughs> Man. well see well see it's kind of, you know it's it's I kind of thought, well, at least George is keeping him working because, yeah, yeah you know, he, just, he deserves to keep working. Agreed. Um, and, and he'll always be a part of this Star Wars universe and so on and so forth. So I kind of just left it at that. And then I sat down and watched the prequels with a, um, uh, oh, wow, there's, there's a magpie looking in my back door. Um, <gasps> Don't look directly into his <laughs> eyes. <laughs> But um, but yeah, then then I kind of what was I saying? Oh, he distracted me. So um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I um, and then he was doing the voices and whatever, and I had to keep him working. And um, uh, yeah, I sat down with with my neighbor's five year old and watched the prequels, mm-hmm. and he giggled his little tiny tushy off every time <laughs> Jar Jar came on the screen. Oh yeah, and 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 seeing it with the child who was laughing at it like that filled in that gap of 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 how i needed to be invested in just that character sure right because I, I knew it was for the kids but i didn't know how uh it's kind of like those things where you just blink away um it's kind of like okay you know sure <laughs> so yeah. so you so you put gp head gpo gpo's head on a um uh, uh an imperial droid's head, body right um, yeah. <laughs> sure <laughs> and and right. r2's dragging him yeah, sure. and Artie's dragging his, and he says, "Oh, what a drag!" Yeah, you know, I'm just like, <laughs> like, I'm just like, I'm just like, okay, I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. But it was when the kid laughed at Jar Jar that it kind of rebalanced um, the force. <laughs> it kind of sure. rebalanced um, my understanding of um, the purpose of three PO and R two in the prequels, and the, and and the purpose of Jar Jar. Right, you know, it kind. It, then once I got that, it, then that then was a later seed that then blossomed into everything else that I did about the pre about the prequels. Sure, um, as well as finding out other little things that kind of helped along the way. But you know, um, Ahmed, you know, and getting to play a character, it's like the choice is saying to myself, 
Right. Knowing what you know now about how everybody um, felt or feels about Jar Jar Binks, would you still do it, Dee? And my answer is 100% yes. Of course. Of yeah. course. Um, um, and um, performing a character for George Lucas, regardless of whether the audience like that character or not, mm -hmm. I'm literally doing it for the maker. Absolutely. You know, Gene Roddenberry was around and he said, well, I want to I want to try this. I want to try that or whatever. Star Trek fans wouldn't, you know, wouldn't miss a beat. They'll be all over it. And, um, you know, even even world class lesbians, if Shakespeare was still around and he was and he was like saying, oh, yes, I'm looking to cast some people for this, whatever. People would drop whatever they're doing to do it. Yeah, you know? right. Regardless... to play a tree. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless of whether the audience were going to appeal or not, it's who you're doing it for. Agreed. Um, but, you know, um, I think the emotional hit um, that Ahmed took also drifted into a professional hit. Agreed. So, so people that want to, people that are doing castings or whatever. You know, they all have a t they will have their own take on Jar Jar if they know about Jar Jar. Right. You know, therefore it's going to influence work to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, not that there is enough against him as it is. You know, so it's um, it's a it's a tough it's a very very tough situation um, and um, one that I think that he has only survived because of a true inner. Um, sense of, of of belief and self agreed you know? absolutely and, and and you have to and you have to um overcome any doubt any shadow that will put any doubts or fears upon you um to an extent so that you can you can burn through it you can rise above it mm -hmm. yeah you can you can um uh um, uh, you can shut down the e the recognition of it even existing by just m pushing forward and moving on. Absolutely. And it takes some. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it can happen in a in a minute or a beat. But um, you know, it's his journey to go on, and you know he has been a part of opening um, opening doors, um, changing. Um, the way CGI is interwoven into film. Oh yeah, um, he's been a part of. He is a part of that. Absolutely. Now the other side. The other side is you know um, those people that have chosen um, the dark side who um, uh, use a lot of venom mm -hmm. um, in in disliking something and. The energy that they they waste um, in in such negative uh, directed forces of of just their hate is 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 unbelievable. That if you realise that you can try to destroy a franchise with hate, you can try to destroy someone's career with hate, or you can just try try to destroy someone's creation of a character with hate that that hate has um has an effect for sure yeah and ca and carries and when you don't have a tight rein over that hate and george tells you you can't you, you know you can't have a rein on hate they, that's why anakin went to the dark side because he couldn't control it that's right you know you you either become the dark side or you don't there isn't like oh, I'll guide it by the hand and I'll dip in as and, as and when <laughs> you I can't feel. dip your toes in. It is all consuming. Yep. Yes, and 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 it and it will and it will consume you to the point where it does um, stretch um, veer from the character to the individual. Mm -hmm. And and even if certain people hadn't said certain things directly to him, what they say now tells you that yes they are still the same breed and that is when someone you know on on a couple of posts i read and it said um uh um um no we had problem no i, I had problem I, I thought there were only problems with jar jar um didn't have a problem with the actor as as if that would excuse 
um, the threats, the death threats, the, the, the letters of hate and um, personal attacks he as an individual would receive for Agreed. playing that character. Mm-hmm. So they send the character and say, oh, I'm going to let the character have it by sending the actor the information about just how much I hate that character or whatever. You know, um, but it, it, went from, it went from the character to, to hating him, hating his performance and whatever. And there are people out there now, and I read something and it just kind of made me realize that while... I may never have been aware of the fact that I share a plan with, with such creatures as, 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 as these. Um, it's become and been brought to my attention now that I do, you know, and I don't think they've just suddenly been born. I think they've always been. It's almost like um, a seasonal thing or whatever. Now it's their time to, to kind of rise to the surface mm-hmm. and hopefully burn out. But hopefully burn out because because yeah. there's there's nothing but when someone says um uh oh i see what this is the timing of this is 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 just to is just to to, to um uh point out that people are, are spreading hate and to try to calm down the hate or whatever and blah, blah blah or whatever you know and then kind of dismiss it i'm like yeah dude yeah what if yeah if someone wants to talk about bringing peace to, to, to the planet. Mm-hmm. You're still going to say, oh, I don't know why they're doing that. It's because there hasn't <laughs> been any. I'm going to chip in. It's the, 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 and I click on their pages and on Facebook and things like that. I click, I click on the pages and they, 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 they strike me as, as normal human beings. Yeah. <laughs> they, at, as, at first glance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even the emperor made himself pretty for TV. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and I and um, what I've started doing, um, I followed suit with with the rebels out there, and it's, it. But this is how I do it. Whenever someone posts something like that, and and they claim to be a Star Wars page or whatever, but they post something asking such an insightful question as to, um, what do you feel about this or what do you feel about that, you know, mm-hmm. as opposed to saying, oh, did you enjoy this or did you enjoy that? And, you know what I mean? Sure. Um. So they are. They are looking for the clicks and they are looking for the likes or the hate. They are looking for the, the, um, the arguments on those pages. But what I've noticed is that I, I'll read some of them and then someone ignorant will come on and say something. And this is the heart of the community. The heart of the community want to educate them and say, no, no, that's not how it goes. It goes like this or whatever. <laughs> and, and, then, and then these people come back with something even more ignorant. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, you kind of, from the time they've opened their mouth and they've, and they've typed that one line that tells you exactly what species you're talking to. True. Yeah. True. You can, you convince them that it is daylight outside. I know. You know, when the, <laughs> you're right. And it shines. Yeah. So do not get into a conversation with them, go onto their page, block them. Yeah. And stop having conversations and stop trying to have debates with people that don't want to have debates. Totally agreed. Yeah. Totally yeah. agreed. I mean, that's that's the thing is like the best way to combat that is to not listen to them because they want to be heard. That's what it all boils down to. They are yeah. they're insecure. Their their hate is the thing that gets them out. And we invention of the internet and Twitter, they have a microphone, so they're like, I can spread this out. But if you don't like them, you don't retweet them, you don't engage them at all. They're just yelling into a void. It's like, let them be the crazy person over there saying hateful things, and we're just going to talk about how awesome Jar Jar, you know? That's, that's right. That's right. You take away their voice. That's right. How do you take away their voice? You just block them. You don't communicate with them. That's right. You know? That's how and, we're going to win. And, you know, I've been saying this for a while, and and I see that Ryan Johnson has finally gotten, gotten the hang of that. Yeah. You know, he, you know, he'll try, you know, bless him, and he was trying to have these these debates with people and and whatever and then the kelly tran thing came up or whatever and there's now a d goots thing happening or whatever mm-hmm. and i'm just like you people are just giving them a voice yes the fan yes the true fans will always stand by other uh, other true fans always. and, and ha- we will we will always have each other's backs mm-hmm. but these people do not deserve your time or effort or whatever um agreed you know i can't i can't um 
I can't abide things like that. So this whole thing about Ahmed, I'm um, going back to Ahmed, mm -hmm. is um, uh, you, you say he's your hero. He's, he's he's one of my heroes too. You know, um, and look at what I'm doing. I wasn't I wasn't doing this when the prequels were happening. I never thought anything like this was ever going to happen. You know, and yet here I am. You know, um, and as far as I'm and as far as I'm concerned, Ahmed is technically family, you right. know. Absolutely. Um, so so it's I'm very, very inspired by his voice now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I do believe it's well timed. And mm -hmm. um, I love the fact that it, he's he said what he's had to say now. He's going on tour and he's going to share share his thoughts and share his um, his journey with with people or whatever. Um, I I don't know if it's ever going to be video. I don't even know if I'm ever going to see it or It'll whatever. Be recorded on my show. <laughs> he's coming on I, the oh, show. <laughs> you know, he, I don't. He? he doesn't know it yet. But yes, oh. <laughs> when we first started the well, show, that was the does, guest to get. I'm so like well, when, massive. When he does, you give you give him you give him my love and respect. Oh, I will. Um, but uh, it's yeah, it's like before. You know, I know we stand on the shoulders of all the other creature performers mm -hmm. um, of the original movies, and um, you know, for me. I never thought I would. I, it would, hadn't even crossed my mind my career would move into this. You know, I thought, well, be an actor, maybe I'll get to be a guard or, or, or you know, or, or a rebel or something. It, it, and I'm not even thinking like Star Wars. So I could be an actor. In, sure. Not, sure. not necessarily someone in a creature suit. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I hadn't thought about that. You know, but now I now I move into that in the Force Awakens. I'm stepping into Ahmed's territory. I'm right. stepping into everybody's territory. You know, um, and so uh, yeah, just knowing what he must have had to go through, understanding what he did go through. Mm -hmm. Um, it could happen to it could happen to any of us. Um, but the fact, but the fact that it's just uh, it's just a series of ignorant attacks, you know. And I'm like, wow, no one shut it down. Okay, cool. No one shut it down when people were going crazy that Finn was a stormtrooper. Right. Um, you know, which means that they haven't seen any of the making of movies. I know. You know, to know <laughs> back stormtroopers. You know. Oh yeah. Um, um, regardless of whether they were supposed to be clones or not, but people inside, you know, so, um, mm -hmm. you know, no one said anything or everyone's trying to be too nice and things like that. And um, time for being too nice is what has gotten everybody in this situation, mm -hmm. you know, for sure. They're, you know, um, anybody watching, listening, listening to this, this podcast who is on Instagram, face, Facebook or Twitter, um, I'd like to remind you that you can, there is a block button um uh that you can you can click on and have these people blocked from your pages and and everything like that um instagram twitter and facebook they say that they're there to to help you and 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 to cut down on on the abuse um but other than you reporting someone um carrying out some abusive behavior or whatever what is it they do what sure. is it they do do they did they protect the, some of the people that have, have announced that they're walking off social media? Did they protect them? You know, have they reached out to them and say, well, look, um, tell us who it was and we will, and we will block them and ban them or whatever, blah, blah, blah. No, they do not care. So the only people who care uh, should be you and yours. So mm -hmm. to protect you and yours, understand and find where the lock buttons are. That's right. You know, um, and if you're listening to a conversation or, or on, on Facebook or watching something, you know, if it's a page that you enjoy and someone's just come on there and they're starting different stuff, um, find, go onto their page and block them. You yeah. know, don't expect, don't expect them to turn around and say, oh, oh, you know what? I was wrong. I was mistaken. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, that, that isn't the species you're talking to. Right. You know, um, but yeah, we need to we need to do more to um, support and look after one another. 
but do it correctly. Do it with, uh, do it with a spine. You know, right. I block these people. I don't, I don't care. You, you know, go. don't, don't, don't do it half hearted. I'm too nice. I'm too nice. I want to explain it to them. I want them to understand. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the block button is here. No, that is a. That's actually a great note to end on. Is with the fandom, we need to account for one another, but also remember, don't engage. That's the answer to all of this. Because if you're engaging, they're never going to change their mind. They're not here to actually have a conversation. So let's just and- let's put them in their room with the with the, with the block button room. And let them yell at each other in the. We're just going to keep on enjoying yeah. what we enjoy. And there's and there are so many there are so many pages out there on on Instagram and Twitter and so many beautiful people out there like yourself Stop. who would just have so much who have, who have so much love, so much joy and enjoy talking about this stuff. Um, that's what a fan does. They enjoy these things. Agreed. It's not there to whine, complain about these things. It's like find something you love about it and just. Ah, oh, just talk about it till till you can't talk about it no more. Agreed. You know, um, the time, the know, timeliness, we, we, uh, the timeliness of episode eight with Rose talking about you know that's how we're going to win, not by fighting what we hate, but protecting what we love. It's like it's like Ryan uh, just knew about the cosmic need of that line. It's like this is it. This is what we need at this yeah. time. Gotta yeah, and you know what? And 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 in and in his defense. You know, it's not like he didn't give them a warning. I know. You know it's, in the, it's in the trailer. This ain't going to go the way you think. That's right. You know, who, the, who do you think he's talking to? That's right. That's right. God, I love it. D, you are so much fun to talk to. So, <laughs> so I, I, I have to ask before I forget, where can people find you online? Because I need to be following you. Oh, I'm on I'm on Facebook. You can find me as Details. I'm not sure if it's D. I think it's Details Five or something on Facebook. But you'll recognize me because there'll be a Daffy Duck taking a bath in a red cup. This is true. And if it's and if that's not the picture, it will be a Daffy Duck something. Right. Um, <laughs> and then I'm on Instagram as Digital underscore Star or Details, and you should find me labeled as digital underscore star star on that um and i'm on twitter as details i think it's all just one word it is d-double-e d-double-e best name ever and i thought i had a cool <laughs> name with brian balance but then i met someone named details so touche <laughs> <laughs> but dude you are always welcome to come back on it is such a pleasure to talk to you always and i'm gonna say always uh, again so <laughs> uh yeah i hope you've had a good time you know you know how we do Hey, as always, as always. And once again, congratulations, man. Thank you. <laughs> More testament to her patience than anything I did. So, <laughs> But until next yeah. time, everyone remember <laughs> the, the, the tips that we gave. Don't talk to them. Just, just block them. Enjoy what you love and then to people who also love it. And let's just have a good time. Yeah. yeah. There's so much to enjoy. There's there, so much to enjoy. There really is. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. If you enjoyed this episode, please share with and tell your friends. Let them know we got some cool stuff going on over here. Also, uh, I've finally broken down and made a Patreon. If you'd like to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash Jedi Brian. On that note, Special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, and Daryl. Your support means everything, and I cannot tell you guys how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.